thanks everybody for being here. We're going to start with some of the usual things, uh, which are commissioner introductions. My name is Kasha, and I am chair of the Parks Commission. Uh, Stephanie Hunt, Parks Commissioner. Emily Donaldson, Parks Commissioner. Thank you, Frasca, Parks Commissioner. Andrew. Andrew Brewer, Parks Commissioner. And uh, Galsworth, Parks Director. And why don't we also introduce um, dog committee people as well? Sure. Uh, Robin Govin, dog committee. Dana, oh no, <laughs> Diana Green, Dog Committee. Dana Duana Yardley, Dog Committee. Jessa Barnard, Dog Committee. Excellent. And you introduced staff. Okay. And um, Kara is online on staff. And um, for those of you, um, especially online, does anybody have a piece of, uh, you have a bright yellow piece of paper? Can you pass that around the room for people to write their names on? Um, so if you're in the room, if you don't mind writing your name, we'll just add your name to the minutes. For those of you online, um, we can see some of your names. Sometimes online gives you a first name, not a last name, or you have a couple people joining you. If you don't mind just dropping um, who's with you into the chat, um, that will help us just collect everybody's names for the minutes. Um, so let's um, do the commissioner point of uh, order type work. Um, we have our May 7th agenda and April 9th minutes. Can I get a motion? I'll approve the May 7th minutes and tonight's, oh, today is May 7th. So I can approve those minutes. <laughs> May 7th agenda but and April 9th minutes. That's what I'll make a motion for. Okay. Andrew seconds, um, any discussion? Um, just that I'd like to just take a minute to figure out meeting logistics for the rest of this month, if possible. Like past, there's next Monday, but then we have a regularly scheduled meeting um, to decide if and when we want to do that and what the agenda is. So I can get that out. Mm -hmm. It'd be great. Should we add that to the end of this? Your suggestion? Beginning and whatever you want. Yeah. Let's add that to the end of this because this meeting may inform some of that. So that's good. Okay. Okay. Um, so um here um Alec isn't on the commission. Does somebody want to suggest adding that to the end of the agenda? Let's add discussions for the rest of the month's meetings to the end of the agenda. Second. Um okay, so um uh of uh, All right, so with that amendment of talking about future meetings at the end of this agenda, any further discussion? And can I get a vote? Uh, we've already approved, seconded. I think we can get a, a vote as amended. All in favor? Opposed. Okay. okay. Um. Next, we have public comment for items not on the agenda. I think most of us are here today to talk about dogs and Hubbard Park. Um, if you are here today to talk about something else, now is your moment to shine. <laughs> All right. Hearing none, we're just going to move right along. Um, so um, we'll get to the meat of why we are here tonight, which is to talk about dogs and Hubbard Park and people. Um, I want to just open kind of similarly to the way we started a couple meetings ago um, that just remind everybody that we're all here because we love our parks. We love our people. We love our community. We even love our dogs. Um, most of us have dogs. I had to say goodbye to my dog last fall. It's still very sad to me. Um, and um, we have heard from so many of you. It's been actually pretty amazing how many people have emailed, um, posted a front porch forum, all of that. We have been paying attention. Um, I want you all to know that it's very hard to respond to the sometimes dozens of emails a day. Um, if you don't get a personal response, if you get no response, if you just get Alex, hey, we heard from you. Thank you for doing all of those. Um, we, we've seen what you have to say. Um, and really appreciate everybody's comments and participation now and also going back a couple of years now from when we were doing the Hubbard and North Branch management plans and taking people for walks in the park and um, doing surveys.
You're on mute for Zoom. It just turned off. Uh, I think it's, is that work in media? Yeah. Yeah, that was my bad. I muted everybody because there were some people not muted, but I also muted you. I won't do that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I think we heard most of what was said. It was just that last moment. Thanks. Thank you for letting us know. We had no idea. <laughs> um, and as a piece of these public engagement, a piece has, of course, also been the 2017 vote that the city had. And I just want to surface that as something that also is what brings us together. That was kind of a black and white thing. It was a 50-50 split. Um, and I know the Parks Commission at the time did say, hey, like, we don't really think this needs to be solved by a 50-50 split. We need compromise. There's a lot more nuance here. This isn't going to solve the problem. And it turns out that that vote didn't really solve the problem. So that's why we're here tonight to bring in the nuance and the really deep conversation to find something different than just a yes or no, which I don't think is going to work for the community. Um, so what we're going to do tonight um, is open for public comment from all of you in the room and online. Um, there have been a lot of opportunities for public comments um, over the course of this via email. The last couple meetings just really focused on this issue. Um, what there hasn't been a lot of is opportunity for parks commissioners and dog committee people to talk to each other. And just so everybody knows kind of logistics, we all love our open meeting laws. We're so grateful that, to them. Um, but it means that as commissioners, we cannot talk to more than one person at a time. And so it makes it really hard to collaborate. It makes it really hard for all of us to sit in with the dog committee and say, hey, how could we work out this challenge together? And so um, I would, we would love for that to be the primary um, focus tonight as having that conversation because we don't get that outside of this room. We step out of that, that room and we don't get to have that conversation. Um, and so I do wanna start by opening up for public comment. We're gonna do that for a maximum of 15 minutes. Um, and ask people to, to hold a two minutes each. And I also want to say that if you've emailed us, if you've called us, if you've posted a front porch forum, we've seen those things. And um, especially want to invite people who haven't had space to participate in another way. If you've already participated, consider stepping back and making room for others to participate here. Um, and um, so that everybody can have a voice in the space and making sure we have plenty of time for the commissioner and dog committee discussion. Um, Excuse me, ma'am. Um, yes. What exactly do you mean by participation? Um, are you referring to like participation? Like, did you receive my email? Um, no, I mean like, so if you, um, when I open it for public comment, um, and anybody is welcome to speak. And I'm just suggesting that if people have already engaged with us quite a bit, um, maybe an opportunity to step back and let others engage. Um, so we're going to have public public comment, and then we're going to go into a deep dive kind of discussion of, of the options that are kind of surfacing, um, coming to the surface as primary solutions going forward, um, and talk about the pros, the cons, tweaks we would like to he see. That'll be just a discussion between commissioners, staff, and the dog committee. Um, working through um, a kind of a table format together to, to organize our ideas and conversation. Um, and then we'll have space for um, each of those three groups, the dog committee, staff and commissioners to discuss further. And then we'll figure out next steps um, in terms of what is happening in our next meeting when we meet um, just about a week from now, next Monday at 5 p.m. Um, so that's kind of the outline for the evening. Um, we're hoping to do all of that by 7.30. Um, and I am going, I think that's everything. I'm going to pause there. And um, it's 6.14 now. I'm going to open it up for public comment. Um, and again, um, please um, limit your comments to two minutes and um, consider stepping back to make space for others if you've already spoken up. Did you have a question? Um, I was just wondering, once you start meeting, are we allowed to make comments? Or we have we're quiet and just listen and can't comment. Yeah, so I think what we're going to do in order to make space for the conversation amongst the committee and commissioners is to, you all are welcome to observe, and but we're going to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so this is it.
<laughs> well, we for tonight. Yeah. You can email us. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's yeah. So we have this is um both part all all three parks. These are the on leash, off leash. Um do you mind introducing yourself with um, your name? Lane Thank you. I don't have to tell the for everybody, but um, so why I'm doing this, I'll make a comment. Maybe we can just pass them around. Thank you. So, um, yeah. Yeah. in fairness, if you look at the map, the off-leash area, uh, for the, the on-leash area, North Branch and River Park, if you're going to start making us use leashes in Harvard Park, then I think we should easily get, you know, off-leash areas in the other two parks. Fair? Sounds fair, right? Um, dogs that are leashed are more dangerous. That's why the reason, um, that's why the rules at the dog park, at most dog parks have taken leash, dog off leash before entering the park. Um, and many of us have walked our dogs off leash for 20 to 30 years in this park. Um, are you going to have uh, the park staff police this? Uh, do you think the park staff really wants to like hand out tickets? Um, did John E. Hubbard, one reason he donated the land was to preserve the wilderness for the future generations. Early photos show horses grazing on grassy hills, untied. The mapped areas that you guys have, you know, are just not good for an elderly person, you know, and our population um, has gone up more for the elderly than anything else in Vermont. So, thanks, Elaine. Yep. Yes. Well, I'll go next. Thank you. And I have not engaged in this process before except to watch it from a distance. And my, my name is Charlie Watson. I live here in Montpelier. I've been here for, I don't know, off and on 20 years. Um, and my opinion, this is a tempest in a teapot. Much ado about nothing. It's because, and I say that because I am, and by the way, Alex does great, Alec does great work and has done immense, an immense uh, help to the park. It's wonderful. However, this is an issue that is critical to a very small number of people, I believe. I saw 547, I think, was the number of responses. People don't respond to positive things. They respond to things that are negative. So you can count that most of those response, that's the way surveys work. People vote against, they don't vote for. Um, and the, the, most of those comments have come. Uh, my guess is we don't know that because that number is not available to us, but we know that a lot of people have responded and we don't know how many of them are duplicates. We don't know any of, any of that kind of stuff. My biggest complaint about this is the research methodology wouldn't pass my high school class. You know, there is no research methodology here. There's tell me some opinions and let me, and I'm going to offer operate on those. And the only opinions I'm going to respond to are the ones that agree with the, the primary charge. This whole thing starts from a position of a presumed outcome. If you look at the survey, there's not a question on there that says, should we just leave this alone? Is Are the dogs really bothering you? There's nothing about that. Every question on the survey is, how much should we limit? not should we limit or not, it's how much should we reduce access for people in Montpelier. I agree with this lady over here. Those of us who are uh, age enhanced are going to find those back lines. I walk on them every day. We've been in that park, my wife and I, at least once and usually twice a day for over 10 years with a couple of different unleashed dogs. And I agree that the, the dogs that are that are problematic are those that are being restrained. We go walking with 10, 20 dogs a day in different places around, the dogs are fine. It's the people who are committed, who are transmitting, projecting that that tension to the dogs. So I'm happy with, I'd be great with uh, doing some education for those people who are overly tense about their dogs. Dogs don't hurt each other. They generally don't hurt people unless they're being somehow restrained and given the message that whoever's coming up is dangerous to them, presents them with an issue. So I would say, first off, so the research methodology is poor. I don't, I'm not saying that is a commentary. I'm two minutes, okay. I'm saying that 
if you want to do it, if you're going to make a research-based and um, informed opinion, then get the information. Who's responding? How are they responding? And I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Anyone's room? Oh, thank you. Uh, hi. Do I stand up? No, no but no, start no. with your name. Okay, I'm Deborah Lisman. I live in Montpelier. I've been here 23 years this time. I've lived here before. Um, and I do not have a dog, but I want there to be dogs in the park. And I walk there a lot. And I love when dogs come up to me. I bring dog treats because I love them so much. I also want people to feel safe. I understand that there are those who are scared and there are a few dog owners who do not have control over their dogs and it ruins it for the majority who do. And so I would love there to be at least two different sections of the day that dogs can be off leash at the least because prime dog walking time, people who own dogs have to do it. And I had a dog in the past and she was a big dog and she needed to run. Just walking on leash was not healthy or fair. And there's nowhere else in the city where dogs can run. So, it's scary to be here and to say this. I haven't been to any of these before, but I just really want to support there to be dogs in the park. I would be really sad if they weren't. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, I don't have notes or prepares or whatever, <laughs> um, but I want to show up and um, let's see. So I'll try to think of a couple of points. You start with your name. Julia Gresser. So I did write an email this past week and I'll try to talk about something other than what I said, but let's see. Um, okay, I broke my wrist. It's the only time I've ever broken a bone. And it was uh, the summer before last, picking my dog up at doggy daycare. And uh, he was on a leash uh, and two other people were there with their dogs on a leash and the dogs were all excited. And I you know, took a step as I was greeting somebody else and I tripped over the leash. My neighbor in Hubbard Park Drive, same thing happened to her. I picked her up off the road one morning because she had her dog on a leash and somebody else came along with their dog on a leash and the dogs crossed and down she went. Um, so there, you know, there. Are, I I want to. I wanted to start by saying how much I appreciate all the work. I mean, I'm just like blown away by all the work and all the conversation that's going into this, and how thoughtful all of you are being. Um, but I I have a fear that there's this creeping. I don't think humans are very good at at coexisting with with other species, and um, it seems like it's always like. You know, if it's any kind of inconvenience for the human, then we should get, you know, we should pen the, the rest of the species or whatever. So I know this is a complex issue. I know we have to work out a compromise, but I, I am fearful uh, as an older person in my 70s about the, the decision that uh, all dogs are going to be on leashes, even in like, and then uh the trails that I love the most, like the handicap trail and the and the tower trail, are going to be dogs on leash uh, because when you're older, it's hard to be looking down at the ground constantly uh, at roots and things and ice. Um, it, those some of those trails are the best trails for elderly people. And if there could be times of the day, at least the other thing, the other brilliant idea I had was my dog is a, is a service dog and goes to nursing homes. He had to get He had to go through a training. He had to get a, a scarf uh, and a badge. And I would be happy to pay to have to take my dog to the Humane Society and have a staff member there see about the recall that I have with my dog, his how he responds to verbal commands, is he aggressive with with strangers, whatever. They can do all, they know how to do all that. That's what my dog went through to become a therapy dog. And I would pay for it to have him have a bandana with a little badge on it that says that he's been vetted and he can walk in the park. So that that's another possibility. Thanks. Thank you. 
I'm going to shift online for a second since we've had a few folks in the room and just see um, maybe somebody can help me because I um, does anybody online want to chime in? Yes. Yes. All right. I hear Danis. Yes. Um, I wanted to speak to the uh, person who was talking about education because that's something that came up after the, I mean, it's come up a lot of times in the past, um, that that's what something that would be really helpful uh, to these problems, so-called problems. And um, there, there hasn't been anything in any of the papers and, and plans that I've gone through on your website um, about any kind of um, education, educational element. And after that uh, uh, 2017 vote, you know, that was supposed to be put in place. And we put up, up all those cards that uh, Brian showed you the other day. And, um, and then it was never enforced in any way. Um, it was never it was never taken up by certainly by the parks commission by anybody in the parks, um, and so we have now and also at that time, you know it was there are certain um, legal remedy for a, 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 an incident and it was supposed to be all of those incidents were supposed to be um, forwarded to the police department. Okay, so, and I guess that didn't happen either in the last, I don't know, seven years, because what the police department has has provided in the last couple of days is they have 10, no, I'm sorry, 12 incidents reported to them in the last five years. None of them have been investigated, maybe one was. But then I see um, all of this paper, all of these front porch form kind of postings, which I, I, I think there were a couple 200 pages that's, that are on your website. Um, and that's all anecdotal. I mean, it has to be anecdotal because it never was investigated. So it's, you know, I, I kind of, I don't, I'm not quite sure what the problem, why the problem has gotten so big. Because nobody wants nobody wants an aggressive dog, and anybody with an aggressive dog doesn't want to come to the park. They don't want to get into that. Um, and you have you know, and on these surveys as well, you know, on the last on the last survey, you have two hundred and forty six people who say they don't want any dogs around them. You've got two hundred and twenty people who say yes, they don't care, they want to be around dogs, and then you have a neutral forty eight people. On the vote in, in uh, 2017, there were 13, 1,315 votes. I think this is the only way to open this up to a city vote instead of these, you know, you've done three surveys in the last, I don't know, uh, three, four years, and they're, they don't really jive much. And, they're, and they are weighted, as, that, as the first uh, speaker, you know, uh, pointed out. And it, it, I, I don't think... I don't think that's the way to go on deciding what you're going to do on, on making such an, uh, a very, you know, unusual, um, it, you know, it, it is a very hurtsome kind of uh, uh, rule for the park. That's Thanks, it. Thanks, um, I know Molly um, raised her hand next, and then we are just about at 15 minutes. Just want to point that out. Molly. Thank you. My name's Molly. Uh, my husband and I walk our dog in Hubbard almost every day. We live just outside of town, um, out of the Montpelier boundary by a couple houses. And we used to live in Montpelier before then. Um, and we've been following along with this and not really providing comment just to see where things go. And at this point, it seems that uh, there will be some sort of on-leash policy and we, we can get behind that in some regard if need be. And I just was reading today on the Front Porch Forum uh, issue 7887 that Becca Wolf emailed you all a proposal and also posted it on Front Porch Forum. And I just want to second her uh, her idea of doing even in odd days 
uh, on leash, off leash. It sounds like she's got some experience in other areas that she's lived where that was successful. And I think that might be a nice compromise um, because that means that everybody who maybe has mobility challenges and still have a dog or, you know, wants to be on the more maintained trails have the opportunity to be in the areas that they want to be in, as opposed to just being pushed to the far end of the park. Um, so if you hadn't reviewed that yet, I think she also emailed you all. Um, I strongly support that, um, that proposal and thank you all for the work that you're doing. I know this is not easy. Thanks, Molly. Um, who has their hand up? Yeah. Well, I have an opportunity to speak later or it's now my Now is the opportunity. So um, let's hear, who has their hand up? Mary, it's not up on Zoom, it's just- Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, let's hear from Mary and then um, we'll hear from you. And then I'd love to have, create space for us to check. Uh, Mary, uh, we can't hear you, you're on mute. Hold on, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. I didn't know how to make that little hand in the corner. Um, okay, I no don't know how to do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am for alternating days, uh, leash and unleashed, um, as Becca posted on Front Porch Forum, something like that or that. And I do uh, think that even though the survey may have been flawed, um, it's obvious that there are issues, and I think the comments really speak to that uh, over the, the last years. And I will say, too, when people say there's only been uh, so many police reports, it's it's very, very hard to to do that if you had an interaction, say a dog jumped on you, and then you 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 go about finishing up your time there at the park but during that time you'd have to ask what is what is the per, the owner's name uh all sorts of information you know and that that's really a difficult situation and people don't aren't comfortable with that so that's a lot of times that's why there aren't reports unless there's been a bite or something it doesn't mean that people haven't had negative reactions interactions it just means that it, it's very hard to do you know that putting yourself out there to to say look your your dog shouldn't have done that and i want your name that that's really hard so i want to just recognize that there there are big problems they've been going on and i think it could be totally fair just to alternate days and um and also do a trial on something and see how it works and um, I, I wouldn't go for a city vote on it. Um, I think we've had enough information from all these years that it, there are issues. Um, I love dogs, but there are issues. Um, that's all for now. Thank you. Um, thanks, Mary. Go ahead. Thank you. My name is Nolan Carver. I live on Winter Street. Um, our Blakely family has been on Winter Street for over 150 years. Um, Hubbard Park was my backyard, and so it felt like it was my family farm, honestly, or the closest thing that I could come to my own farmland. Um, I've made a number of, you know, awesome memories in the park. Um, I used to uh, really um, sort of like the privacy of just going for a walk just to kind of get away from everything. Um, over the years, I, I had noticed a trend uh, that I found increasingly frustrating, scary, and alarming. It was that random people's dogs just really like to bark at me. And I'm just one of those people. They just all bark at me, all of them. Uh, that being said, um, I actually have some traumatic experience as well in my family. Uh, there was a horrific incident involving some hunting dogs. Um, you know, some people really get dogs and other people just will never actually get it. And that's that's bittersweet because that park is supposed to reflect Mother Nature. And we do struggle to find this balance with Mother Nature. And when Mother Nature goes bad, it can be really bad. Um, but that being said, however, I do respect the majority seniority here. 
there are enough of us elders that we really have to consider before we marginalize and essentially disrespect our elders. Um, that is the that is the task that we must face here. It's a moral dilemma. It's one at risk versus another serious risk. And let me just say one more thing before you consider me a dog hater. I really, really like dogs. Um, I don't own one and I don't ever intend to own one. I'm not a responsible enough person, but I'm wise enough to know such a thing in the first place. And I really uh, am in need of the companionship and, and, and maybe even the protection. There's plenty of drug dealers up in that park nowadays. Uh, believe it or not, um, I consider our, you know, our local police, you know, to be an asset in the community. But when I see a police dog in a car, you know, that's not really necessarily an asset to me. So, you know, the, the balance can be thrown off kilter depending on which perspective, you know, you're looking through. And I just like to say, and at least to acknowledge the seniors here, I definitely see your perspective. Because if we change this park now, uh, you're right, uh, we will be somewhat disinheriting that, that Hubbard legacy that was essentially promised to us. Uh, there's nothing like running free in the woods, even if there's some danger involved. Uh, in that case, maybe I need to learn uh, to bring a dog whistle and a walkie-talkie to call the police. I'm not sure. That's how I feel. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. All right. Um, I am going to shift. I'm sure other people would love to speak up. Um, I want to remind everybody that you're welcome to email us, call us, reach out to us, meet with us, go on walks in the park, whatever um, works for you to engage with all of us. Um, but I do want to make space for um, dog committee and commissioners to talk because we don't get to do this. This is actually kind of special. Um, ask, yes. Ask a quick question. Yes. Is there any option that is going to be that you're going to be discussing or discussing to do to make no change? Um, do presuppose that there must be a change. I think that's a great question. I think. Um, What's been identified by years of commission conversations is that there's a need for change. What's working now is keeping people out of our parks and it's creating a space that's essentially inequitable where there are people, it's, it's actually quite fascinating because um, what we hear via in one-on-one -on -one walks via email is a, far more people saying, I have a preschooler and I'm afraid to bring them a, to a park or um, when my grandkids get come to visit, if there were dogs on leash, I would bring my grandkids in the park, but I'm not going to do that now. What um, the other two parks? Oh, is that going to be included here? Um, we have a management plan for our park system as a whole. And what we're looking at and follow up to the Hubbard and North Branch management plan is looking at Hubbard Park specifically. So we we looked at, we have spent a year or more assessing both of those major parks. Um, and one of the action items was to look at this specifically in Hubbard Park. So that's what we're looking at tonight. So just for clarity, North Branch Nature Center is not part of the city park system. I know it's appeared on the map. Well, this and was on, listed. this was on the Vermont Rec yeah, site. Just letting you know, we have no you control click on it, over that. This pops up. Yeah, just so you know that we have no control over leashing that North Branch Nature Center. It's a, it's a private, well, it is on the site, but yeah, I'm just letting you know it has nothing to do with it. Um, and so we're looking at Hubbard and we're looking at change in the park and in some way or another so that we can make space for more people in our community to, to enjoy our parks. Um, and the question is, what does that look like? And I think that, and that was, and you know, that's why actually, you know, people have criticized the dog committee survey for saying, hey, what about no action? That's that was kind of the baseline starting from is what could a path forward be, and that's that's why it was arranged that way. Um, so um, what I'm gonna do here, and actually you all, if I do a screen share, you can see up there. Okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do. While you do it, can I just add something about the yeah. format? Um, 
I really appreciate all the people who've come, like members of the public to come and listen and, and acknowledge you only do get 20 minutes to talk. And I do want to just say that this is a meeting format that's sometimes called a fishbowl, where you actually all have a really important role out there, which is to really listen to this conversation that the 9, 10, 11 of us are going to have and take some notes on it. Think about what you hear and reflect that back to us after the meeting in some way, like talk to us, send emails, whatever. So um, your job is not done. Like if you want to stay here and you want to participate, it can be really powerful to just have observers in this process. Is there more than one email that's available or just that one? That one um, Parks Commission email link goes to the entire commission and then we forward it. Also, the dog committee sees it. So everybody here gets it. And then also on the 13th at five o'clock in the chambers is a second public hearing. So that will be public comment focused, followed by a decision that will hopefully be sketched out in the next hour and 15 minutes. So stay tuned, people. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Excuse excuse me sir. Thank you so much. I, I just had one final comment. I just like to say in, in, in this guy's favor, you know, if it is on the agenda to change the rules, right? And to 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 change the park because it has been so us in such a way uh, as 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 we've 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 let the dogs run free. It's just been that way, and now it's going to change. I was just wondering, could we possibly consider making Hubbard a dog park only? Is it worth is it worth acknowledging the possibility at least that it could be designated as a dog park? It's just a theory, just a theory. Thank you. Thanks. In that in that upcoming the next meeting is there more than twenty minutes allowed? Yes, yes, yeah. And next Monday at five o'clock. And hopefully, right now, um, people have asked me like, "Well, what's the park commission proposing?" And I'm like, "I don't know because we haven't talked about it." So right now, you all actually have nothing really to comment on because we don't have a. We haven't been able to talk about what the actual proposal might be. So this is our chance to create what might be the actual proposal that then you would have a week to ruminate on and comment on next week, if that makes sense. So right now, you know, anything you comment on of new ideas or whatever, we can't actually discuss those ideas except for right now, right here in this space, which is why we're creating this space. Let's get to All right. it. All right, <laughs> let's do it. Um, let's make a plan. So um, to all of you here at the table, I'm gonna most, I've been trying to make yeah. eye contact once in a while, but I'm gonna just talk to you all here. <laughs> um, the thing, the um, proposals, the two top proposals that I've just in, kind of heard simmering to the surface mm -hmm. are essentially what I'm calling zones and zones with times. And I know that there are myriad other options or ways of doing that or things you could overlay on top, but those are kind of the two things that I'm thinking would make sense for a, a deep dive con kind of conversation and to pros, cons and tweaks and all of that to get towards something. Um, what am I missing? So I'm just wondering, based on some of the feedback about the even odd proposal, so we're saying zones, zones with times, even odd is pure time. Okay. Actually, I have a question for some of the commenters about that. I wasn't clear if people were saying even odd times within a zone or for the entire park. Mm -hmm. So I actually don't know, are we, do we want to back up to like an entire park structure or do we start with? My under, my understanding of Becca Ralph's proposal yeah. or someone else sort of seconded so, yeah. was uh, days of the week, much like we have parking on alternate sides, right. like this whole day that it is an even number is on leash in this whole day that is an odd number is off leash in the whole park. Whole park. That was my right. understanding of it. And that is less confusing than parking because you don't have to remember that midnight exists. Because <laughs> <laughs> no one's supposed to be in the park at midnight, right? That's already part of the management plan. Get out of the park. Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. And I think... Mm -hmm. I think on the core zone, I think just when we were talking about zones, not everyone has a map in front of them, but the core zone has been thought of in two different ways. And one is based on Alex North-South proposal, which kind of draws a line across the middle of the map, even with his house, which would be that, you know, kind of starting past the parking area by the new shelter and the interpretive chair. 
The other understanding of core zone, I think it's pretty, is a little bit more focused on like the, the hot trails that everyone loves are Stone Tower Path, Interpretive Trail, and um, and in that area, sort of above Course Street, and kind of if you're looking at the map to the left of the mm -hmm. Park Drive, and seven fireplaces, also and the so seven fireplaces yeah. road, and so those are the ones that have the most gentle grade, and so one of the questions about zones that we've gotten into is looking at, you know, knowing that Stone Tower Path Interpretive Accessible Trail and Seven Fireplaces are the most favorite of all users, dogs or no dogs, and also knowing where existing parking is and things like those are the those are the trails that everyone wants the most access to. So in terms of zone, we've had some comments and feedback about, you know, and the north south of what is the zone? Is it those trails or can it include like a walk around from the outside? Like if you were coming up from Winter Street that you could be off leash on that side, sort of behind the old shelter and like going up or, or, you know, is it because the concern is if the off leash didn't start till further north, that it's there's not parking, it's steep trails, it's further. It gets into the well, the the average age of our park user and their uh what is the safest for them in terms of surface area and stuff to walk on. So I think that in terms of consensus, we all can agree that those are the popular trails. Um, and my suggestion in this conversation is, does it make sense to focus on the use of those most popular trails, like by times or in a zone plan? Like, I don't know, what do you think? Can we, so I think we're going to have, like, once we start talking about like, oh, we could like do this on this trail or we could move this boundary. Um, I think that's an, a super important nitty gritty, but I'm wondering if we could like zoom out just a little bit to just say, okay, like when we think about zones, like I don't, you know, think of the park divided in half, just think about like the idea of having zones. Um, what are the, what are the pros and cons of that just conceptually? Mm -hmm. um, and then we can dive into like, you know, cause I, I think that conversation for zones, zones with times and times may then help us lead to like okay actually like of these like concepts here's a concept that seems like it might work mm -hmm. let's dive into the details does that work for everybody so let's just like thinking about let's start with zones when we think about zones like what are the pros and cons I'm sorry, can you make it a teeny bit bigger oh I yes. wear my glasses. I yeah my glasses look like that oh it doesn't yeah. have to be that big but oh that's there. great um, I think the biggest pros of, of the zone is uh, the simplicity of it, that there aren't many trail crosses. It's just like, yes or no. There's no like, and on the fourth, whatever, you know, two o'clock or, you know, it's just really straightforward. And for, and, and I'm, and I think that's a pro for everybody, for visitors to the park who have never been there and are just stopping by, for people who use it every day, for the for staff to know what's happening. Um, I think it's just really straightforward and simple. Great. And that's something we did hear a lot about from people was that they want something that's simple, easy to understand, consistent. Um, so I think we should keep that all of those things in mind with the ultimate solution we're working towards here. I'll offer that a pro of zones is that uh, at least the zones generally as drawn keep the the shelters and the roads are all in the on leash area which sort of just solves the problem altogether of like oh it was my dog on leash near the road are they like oh well the road's 20 feet over there but the dog ran into the road like there's just uh i've heard from a lot of people that there's tension and stress around roads and shelters and interactions with cars and 
I love, that's something I love about this is like, great, all of that is on leash. We don't have any gray areas about shelters and roads. And, and that's regardless of like, right? That's part of the park management plan. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, oh, that's no. yeah. Like, but, like, but it's easier to think, yeah. yeah, it's easier to think, you don't have to like think about like, which which of these rules does it follow under? You're just like, I'm in this area. Yeah. And I think just some helpful background to keep in the room, there's already a city what, ordinance yeah. that dogs must be leashed on all roads. So that includes roads within Hubbard Park. So that's where if we're trying to use the roads as a natural boundary for kind of establishing these zones. You know, these roads that are within the park are all within this proposed on-leash zone currently. And that's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. Jesse, you were going to say. Well, no, I mean, I was just going to say the big. I think the big challenge is then uh, the the con depends on what the zone is, but I think a, a potential con is um, the amenities, the safety, the accessibility mm -hmm. of whatever that zone is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's to me the big potential con. Again, depending, you know, you could think what if we flip the zones, but like of a current zone proposal, where the core parking, outhouses, shelters you know, flat trails are all in a potential on-leash zone. That's the big challenge. Flipping the zones is interesting. Like if North was on-leash and South was. I mean, I just think it's like that mental exercise of, oh, well, right, a zone proposal, but then it depends how which the zone is, I think, of like the pros and cons. Um, so I do think, you know, I just have been really struck by the number of people commenting um, who do not feel comfortable on the current northern trails. So again, depending what the zone is, I think we need to make sure that there is access to trails that people feel are walkable, um, depending on, mm -hmm. regardless of season, time of day, you know, that feel, people feel comfortable walking on. And well, I also think it's important that any improvements that we're planning for the new parcel are kind of like expedited as part of this because I mean, sure, we're not going to be able to get all the signs up, all the outhouses in before we implement this change, but we can make it a bigger priority to make those things happen much quicker so that people do feel more comfortable in that new northern portion of the park. What do you think the core of the park is designed? Which, I think desirable is the high eye of the beholder. I desire to go to the northern part of the park more because of the mm -hmm. uh, rich northern hardwood forests, the wildflowers, the solitude. I do too. Mm -hmm. You know, so but I think and I'd say desirability, but also accessibility in terms of like you've heard from people who don't have cars and like can't get to those trails easily if they live on the winter street side. So I think we have to think about that in. There, there are many ways to think about. Yeah, and it, I think that's yeah, the yeah, ability is more straightforward. Yeah, definitely. and it it has it has come up in other comments about flipping and saying the south be off leash and the north be on leash, from people expressing like what are the new trails going to be in that area is more wild and maybe we should like leave dogs where they are and expand on leash to the north and I you know we're zones could be flipped. I have trouble with that idea because the shelters are for people, not for dogs. I don't think that the shelters should be in an off-leash zone. But if the shelters already are on-leash and the roads are on-leash and you're having more confusion, more opportunity for there to be off-leash dogs coming into what's supposed Shelter to be an on-leash area, which are the shelters. Well, let's mm -hmm. let's let's stick with like the pro the zone concepts generally, and then we'll get into those pieces. Dana, I just was a process question. With this many people, I'm wondering if it'd be useful to take stack and be like, you're next, and then you're next, and you're next, because I'm seeing some like cross conversation, and just want to make sure yeah. every voice gets heard because with 11 people, the Thank quiet you. people don't always talk. <laughs> If you want to help me do that, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. I think it's going to be hand raising, which is annoying. But you don't want to um, two things. I'm wondering if you could put that in that bottom part where you had the also. Yeah. Um, to to put that already, it is part of the new um, 
Management plan. Management plan. Thank you. That dogs must be on leash at where, you know, in the shelters and the, all of the parking areas. Because I think that's informative um, when we're when we're looking at possibilities. And then on the pros, could you also put safety and accessibility as well um, for the people who don't feel comfortable interacting? with off-leash dogs. That's a pretty huge issue that I hear a lot about from elders. Um, and, and I'll count myself in that group now, um, or or people with injuries or whatever that, um, you know, the simplicity of knowing that there's a place they can go. And they might even love dogs and love dogs on leash, but not want to interact with off-leash dogs. So knowing that there's a place that they can do that provides accessibility as well. You can keep your cursor in the pros because um, I would like to add that I think the zone option allows you know all users an option every day somewhere in the park. And I think that was something that we all really liked when that was proposed. Um, I think the other thing is that this doesn't exclude anybody from any part of the park. It simply says that you know in certain parts, you're going to have to have a leash. You know, Whereas right now, people who are not comfortable around unleashed dogs are excluded from the entire park. So I think that's important to keep in consideration where we're not actually saying you can't go anywhere to anyone. We're saying, how do we get new people into the park so they can make these you know decades of experiences that they're going to love and have that we've heard from a lot of people that do have that have been comfortable going to the park. And a lot of people don't have that years of experience to reflect on because they haven't been going to the park. Thanks. So Jessa and sorry, you right next one. <laughs> okay. Just a minute. I don't know if this is necessarily a con or a challenge. Um, I, I think um one concern I have, um, and I think it's more applicable to a zone than an hour type solution, is that you're basically constraining the same problem to just a half of the park or part of the park. Like, because there's still going to be half the park with off-leash access that then if people want, like, especially if there are new trails and the new parcel people want to visit, like. The same issue of I don't want to interact or I feel uncomfortable or unsafe interacting with off-leash dogs is now still going to be the same issue. It's just part of the park rather than all the park. So how what is going to make this solution something that in five years we're not back with the exact same concerns, but now just with half the park? Um, Thanks. Um, I feel like I, I want to kind of follow up on Lincoln's comment about people having a really long experience. And I think that's one of the challenges we're facing here is that like, clearly there is not equal access to this public park, which needs to have public access. And so we need to figure a way to create that public access. But also I think I've, I've been really struck by the number of older people who have commented and said, this will basically mean that I'm not gonna go to the park anymore. So even though technically we're not telling anyone they can't go to the park, if that's how people visit the park, they go to the park to exercise with their dogs and there's really no other place you can do that in Montpelier, then I think that's that's something to consider. And I think, um, yeah. Thanks. Um, a... Um, challenge that I would surface with the zones is, um, which we've heard, I think, from the Conservation Commission and I, a couple people emailing is the um, northern ecological communities that I know we are are pretty special. And especially right now, the wildflowers are primo. <laughs> um, and so I want to, thinking about zones, thinking about how do we make sure that if there are, I would, I, we don't know what would happen, but I could imagine that it would have increased use in that Northern part of the park. And so if you have increased use and if increased off-leash dogs, especially in that rich Northern hardwood forest, um, what's the ecological impact to those natural communities? Um, we can monitor that, except that monitoring just documents change and at which point you've kind of like lost what you had and it's hard to get back. Um, so what can we do proactively and, you know, maybe for that, those trails that do go through that special habitat, maybe there, are, I don't, I'm not an ecologist, so I don't know the dates, but like, maybe there's a time 
where like those trails, like you, you get, it's an off leash area, but in the month of May, you have to have your leash dog on leash on those trails just to protect that um, special habitat. I don't know what that would. Um, so I don't, I don't know what would protect the ecological communities, but I do want to bring that up as a challenge and something that we should just be thinking about is what the impacts will be on the ecological communities. Let us have our conversation, please. I mean, I think there's a lot of room for education in both just how to be a respectable dog owner and for things like natural communities that we want to protect. I mean, we have signs up around the various, um, what are they called? The vernal pools. Um, and maybe it's an opportunity to do some educational signage in those areas of the park along with monitoring. And if we are seeing damage as a result of increased use, then you know, more education or asking people to leash their dogs for a short period of the year or a short amount of trail. Or could they be protecting the resource? Like we did with the vermin. Like yeah, it's, it's about like protecting the resources rather than you know. Yeah, something yeah, like that. yeah. So I don't know, and I don't know what those solutions would be. I just want to bring that up because yeah. I think that's it's something pretty special about our parks that we don't want this decision just thinking about people and dogs to accidentally say, oh wait, we used to have those beautiful wildflowers. That's a bummer. <laughs> um, We've talked about zones a fair amount. If we, um, any other like big pros or cons to bring forward or else we can, I would love to have the same conversation on um, maybe times first and then zones with times. How's that sound? <laughs> um, <laughs> Does that trip people up? For the entire, okay. I yeah, think yeah, yeah, it's better called days. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great, thanks. Can I make one more, I think in comparison kind of con that like having zones does uh, increase the probability of um, crossing like some dog running into the on the zone when someone's visiting versus like the daytime. I mean, maybe that could just be a pro in the days, but like if it's one full day, the whole park, people can feel more confident that they're not going to run into an off-leash dog like anywhere. Here. Yeah. Sorry. So is that a pro then for pro the for days, days? Yeah. To expect. I think you feel safer. I think it's comparatively no, safer. No dog, no on off dog interactions. That too. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Did I just capture that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. If I, I heard Diana and then Robin. And then Andrew after that. Okay. We'll just go in this way. Were you raising your hand? No. Okay. Diana and then Robin and then maybe somebody else. Um, I want to reiterate my concern about the northern section having um, a lot of roots, hills. Um, I don't feel as safe there walking alone because uh, there's not as many people there. Um, I understand that there's going to be a plan to make that northern section nicer, but um, even prioritizing it, my question is how long would that be? How long would that take? Um, I think that between the folks who want dogs on a leash and dogs not on a leash, that time frames every day, for say the core during this period off leash and this period on leash, not an odd even aspect because if it's time frames every day, and you know who determines what those would be, um, everybody has a chance to enjoy the entire park in the way that they want to. Without dogs on leash, with dogs on leash, every day. Thanks, Diane. You're welcome. Um, so, 
in terms of the days proposal, the odd days, even days, um, and oh, back to the zones, I will say we did get an, a couple of comments and feedback from people who said, I don't feel as safe walking in the northern thing because I don't encounter as many people. And I don't know if that's someone worried they'll fall and then somebody will come along for a long time. But it, that, that was, uh, that did come up a couple of times that if you call for help, there's no one out there. And um, as far as the odd days, even days proposal, one thing that I think is a pro about that is when we got into t some discussions about zones and times, like there are some people who are really morning people and they're like, just let it be off leash before 8 a.m. And like, I would never see the park before 8 a.m. and I would be bummed. And so like, I like that the odd day, even day, it gives every other day for whatever your preferred use of the park is, whether you're a lark or an owl, you, you can like hit it with your dog or with your not dog or with your leash, you know, like whatever, you can't go every other day, but you should cross train anyway, is my thought, which is not necessarily for the most <laughs> cons, but like, you know, like uh, in terms of, um, yeah, you can't, you you know, it's, it's, it is similarly simple to the zones in that it's concrete. You're either, you're just like you're either in an on-leash zone, you're not in an on-leash zone, you're either on an on-leash day or you're on an off-leash day. Like, I think that it's got nice simplicity too. And yeah, it, it you can be a lark or an owl. See, Jess. I think that, um, the flip side of like the con side, I think, is that especially for frequent dog walkers, um, they're more of like a routine time of day and it's every day as opposed to every other, like you you could potentially adjust, okay, I know I can either walk my dog in the morning or night, but you've got to do it every day sometime as opposed to like this day, I don't have any place to go off leash. So I think it does make it hard. And and I guess similarly for the people who really don't want to be around a dog, if that's your, the only days you're available um, it, it's away from the, it, it gets away from the every, mo every day you have some opportunity mm -hmm. um, as your schedule changes. So I think it's, that's um, a challenge of it. I also think I will admit to being one of those people who rarely knows what day it is, <laughs> date it is. So like I could actually see myself without a phone or watch walking into the park and be like, wait, I actually don't know if it's an odd or even day. I just think it's a little tricky. Yeah, maybe that's just my problem, but I think it is a little bit. Not a problem. I fail every day. Like I know the day of the week, just not the date. Um, no, just so. gotta know the date and draw the hands on a clock <laughs> and then head to the park. <laughs> I, I would tack on to that for, you said the frequent users, I think also infrequent weekend visitors who might have one day that they're free and can come to Montpelier and if it's an odd or an even day and, you know, depending yeah. on what their comfort level is or what their desires are, they might be excluded for the weekend. So I think it's also hard for people who don't come mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would really hope that we can come to a solution where a portion of the park is there whenever for whoever wants to use it. Um, I'm not in favor of even odd days. I think we'll have more issues with compliance. I think it's harder to um, for people to you know wrap their heads around it. People have a lot of problems with the parking solution, um, and we even got some like joke responses on French Porch Forum being like, "What are they going to come up with next? An even odd day proposal? That's a real." <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I am not in favor of an even odd day. I, I I agree with Stephanie. I think that we're we're looking for some magic formula where, at some point, every day, everybody gets to use their part of the park. Something, <laughs> something along those lines, and you know I don't know if we're going to get there. We're for sure going to disappoint people because either, you know that that the, the time that they go to walk with a dog without a dog is not going to be available. It, it, for sure, we're going to disappoint people. Um, okay, so your hands are you? Um, I think another important thing, Becca's proposal, which um, 
she shared today was very like it, it paired it understood that dogs need to be exercised every day so it paired the even off day thing with adding an off leash trail in North, North Branch Park so if we're not mm -hmm. willing to consider doing that we should consider something that would allow people to exercise their dogs in Hubbard Park I would I'm thinking I know we have not even add more confusion but the zones with times I mean I'm almost more in favor of it I would be open to thinking about days if it were in a part of the park as opposed to the entire park I still don't know that I I think I still like times better than days but I'm just saying like I think to the point of right we don't otherwise the, the whole park is in it is not available for off-leash use for an entire day but if it were part of the park or something like that that might be something I'd be more willing to think about but maybe that's just more confusing than the times with zones. well that would be that could be that's a that's a zone of time solution in a way that saying like the core zone is available to off-leash use on odd exactly that's what i'm saying even on in the core mm -hmm. as opposed to the entire park have we shifted to zones with times <laughs> i mean what about what about in you know for half the morning, the north is on leash and the <laughs> south is off leash. The other half of the morning, it flips and then flip again and then flip again. So you could do a morning on leash in the in the south or off you leash in the in south. Place. And then you could go <laughs> the other way and the other way. And it's 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 good it's good 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 just like a, yeah. like a slider. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's gonna be your new job is to slide. Just keep <laughs> walking by, slide the slider. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I guess what I'm, it's, I mean, a bit, like, I know that's not really a workable solution, but I, I think that we have this value of saying all, everyone should have, be able to like go to the park and find a place, but also like everybody does want the park in different areas at different times it's like it's and i think the so like the tricky thing on zones and times it's like yeah so if we say off leash is allowed in the core zone at these particular morning hours it eliminates everyone whose job prevents them from getting there in the morning to enjoy off leash but a lot of people who are commenting on the public comments and stuff are retired and or runners or something who love the morning or don't have a job to get to because they're retired. So they're like, morning sounds great. And for people who have to get like kids and self out the door and be on meetings like really early in the morning, they're never going to hit it unless it's an afternoon time. Mm -hmm. At the same time, like we do have clicker data that we looked at from the beginning when we started this. And we do know that like, it seems like, like peak park usage is, I mean, we know that people use the park in the middle of the day the most. Mm -hmm. And so actually those before work hours and those after work hours, people aren't clicking into the park as much. And then we also know that the people who are clicking into the park are people who are mainly comfortable with the current status quo. So just like acknowledging that and talking about zones and times, like, I mean, I, I, I think a lot of dog people, you have your morning out, your after work poop loop, your nighttime poop loop, <laughs> or like whatever it's, you know, like you have that set schedule and it's probably more like that. Um, but our clicker dad, uh, I think showed the most popular times were uh, from what, like eleven to three. Does that sound about right? I, I think. I mean, I think nine to nine to five was, is yeah. like the most, but there was a couple of midday spikes. Right. Well. Like, I, the, like I, I think I remember it being like, and like on our survey, it was like mid to late morning was popular. Peak like. Vermont lunchtime, kind of quiet. Then in the afternoon, it picked up and then it fell off again after five. And I do want to say, I mean, Diana did actually propose earlier in our dog committee group, like the flipping of the, the 
zones, not not half day, half day, but like, or not quarters of the day, but half and half. Like, could you have one on leash in the morning, off leash afternoon, and then flip just a one once one flip? Um, that that does get at the some, everybody some, having somewhere they can go mm -hmm. all day in the way they like to visit the park. That's just I know it may not be the most implementable, or maybe I don't know. Is it that hard, much harder to sign than we're already signing half the park? It meets an access goal, but not a simple goal. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think a con with the zone at times is that is that it's the most complex out of these three mm -hmm. columns, and mm -hmm. in in the more recent past week or two of comments, I think I've been hearing simplicity as you know the ask, even for folks that are acknowledging. Uh, that they completely disagree with any change at all. They ask that it be simple. Um, and and I worry about trying to be um, everything to everyone with with zones of times. And it has a lot of potential and a lot of risks with confusion, I'd say. All right, I'll go ahead. I'll go, and then you go. Okay. How about that? <laughs> I think um, something where zones with times that I might say as a pro is I think that there's a, a select chunk of early morning dog walkers. And I, I'm, I'm curious about these times of day where the park is less used because I think there's less potential for negative interactions because there are simply fewer people and fewer dogs. And I, I wonder if we, if we minimize the risk somewhat and make a lot of people really happy by being like, great, run with your dog between six and eight in the morning, like have at, um, there's no one there. Like, um, and when we're talking about relative harms to people like that might be a time where people could who really are those morning people who get out and do that could still do that and not put right. other folks at risk so i'm curious about early mornings is the one i think of the most i think rather than evenings just because of vermont and daylight hours um but that's a potential that could could give people some access to those easier trails in the early morning um and oh, sorry, i you have a clarifying question maybe yeah. okay Great. I think that the thing I wanted to add as a tweak, sorry, skipping back to zones for a tweak, um, was I was talking to a friend of mine who had a really smart idea about saying, what if we have, say for this policy, this policy will go into effect when these conditions are met. So like zone proposal that goes into effect once, conditions precedent. once we have an accessible trail in the northern section, then this will start. And so people can have some like forewarning, they can plan, they can know that when the policy launches, there's going to be these amenities. I don't know if that's feasible, but I wanted to stick it in the box. And now we're going to do Diana and then yeah. Um, I'm concerned that for the sake of simplicity, we'll lose equality between those who want dogs off leash and those who would like them on leash, just for the sake of simplicity. So you, we're going to do Kasha and then we can hop back to Robin. Um, I was just going to say on the morning piece, I it actually reminds me of where this all started. I think Jessa, you come to mind. <laughs> I might have been there but <laughs> from our um, public meetings. January of a year ago, like January 2020. Two, three. So the um, yeah. We're talking about the management plan and bringing up the specific trails. And I remember the dog community coming out in force and saying in particular it's the mornings that we really have a community there and it's the mornings that we see our friends and we see our dog friends and um i it does seem like what you're saying of like maybe there's a space to like have a very small window um that's maybe six to eight a.m or six you know and i know robin you're an afternoon person so that shouldn't work for you but we're not we're not going to find things that work for everybody but um, maybe that does actually like support that community um, and support that experience in the park and create space from eight o'clock on the rest of the day to have everybody else enjoying, anybody who wants to enjoy the you know, tower space. Robin, would you make it, oh, we're gonna do Robin and then Justin. I was gonna ask Robin if she'd get there. Okay. Nine. <laughs> Not <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, um, but I, I, you know, I, and I, maybe they're just, maybe that's part of like that there are more morning people and like, I, I just don't, 
you know, have to move to Calais and get a giant piece of land or something and walk on it by myself. But I think that the thing with the times of day and the zones, like Lincoln brought it up um, at our last meeting, like talking about how in New York you have you have times of day on both ends where it's off leash. And I lived in New York for a very long time and it's before nine and it's after 9 p.m. And the parks have really big lights because it's a city park. Mm -hmm. And we're not about to put floodlights throughout Hubbard so that we can have like after, you know, dark walking. Um, but, you know, I do go back to like the, the popular usage times are until about five. And in the winter, if you can be off leash after five, you're, you're kind of in the dark anyway for good chunks of that, um, if not sooner. Um, in the summer, like that's that's a really long window and there I could see where there's might be um, people who want to use the park that don't want to encounter uh, off leash dogs, but um, which, yeah, which is part of why I think there is some inherent fairness in the inconvenience of odd even um, that everybody gets all or everybody gets nothing, depending on what what day it is. But um, yeah, on the I think on the times, if we're going to talk about a zone and the only concession to time is before eight a.m., I also don't think that that is a very great acknowledgement of all of the um, the elders who use the park with dogs who aren't going to get there at 8 a.m. Um, or before 8 a.m. And, you know, one of, I think it's tricky because you could get into this is when toddlers are napping and this is when school kids are out and all of that. Um, but, um Right now, I think it's worth acknowledging that there's a, a strong group of current users who I don't think want to exclude other people from the park, but like are using that park in the day. And so if we are going to get into a zones and times, it doesn't have to be flippy floppy, flippy floppy so many times a day, but maybe it needs to like, is it terribly unfair to say, the core is on leash from noon to five, or somebody said I heard 10 in the back corner, but like, you know, like this started out, like when we were like tasked with the discussion. Yes. <laughs> which is why which is why as the dog committee when we originally said like how about on leash from two to four every day we're like okay the parks commission originally said hey we're thinking like let's just make tower and interpretive on leash and leave the rest as is and so we were looking at it and we we're saying oh simplicity trail crossings all of that how about two to four every day leash your dog morning dog people can still be walking evening dog people can still be walking every day there's time that is in the after school zone that could uh, capture kids where they could not have unleashed dogs and that two to four in terms of hours of park operation is percentage wise greater than the two trails that were originally thought of let's just leash those trails so this has gone far from that, um, but I don't know. I I think like wearing I wearing much more of an advocate hat. I would suggest if we're going to talk about a zone and leashing in the zone and thinking about our current who's our current user, what their demographic is, and what trails they want to use. I would. I would lobby for, yeah, a, a good chunk of time of on leash in the core zone, but also a good chunk of time off leash in the core zone, um, which doesn't really necessarily fit into the chart that you're making, but. Um, both of those all the time. Sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's like the, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the amount of time. time. Yeah. 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 I saw Jessa and then Stephanie. 
And then I want to, um, I keep hearing zones and maybe it would make sense to like refine what even we're talking about and get into like, what is the, where's, what's the lines? Yeah. I'm going to echo actually a lot. Robin got to a lot of where I was going, which is, uh, I know this is overgeneralizing and I don't want to, I really actually don't like the bifurcation of the dog people and the kids people. So I don't think that's uh -huh. fair. However, if that is some of what we have heard is like, I'm scared taking kids here versus I'm an older person and don't feel safe in the Northern section. Again, not mutually exclusive categories, but I do think a later morning than an 8 a.m. I would also strongly support. I think like of the most dog walkers I see, I mean, yes, there's the really early morning, like before we get to work crew, but there's also a strong component of the like, um, you know, we, we roll out of bed at eight and then we go up to the park in the nine to 10 window, especially if we're talking seven days a week on the weekend, like, I don't think there are many people up there before, you know, we're there by eight. Um, I also think if it were, say, a 10 a.m. start, um, that allows, like, the mo most families with kids probably aren't rolling into the park well before then anyway. Um, so I think that that would give a chance to accommodate most of what we were hearing in terms of how people would like to use the park. I echo also like the end of the day Question after five. Um <laughs> feeding. Well, and and you know, there are people who after, you know, I I I think that we've seen that with the data, there's not much use. Whether I I don't know that that exact cutoff at the end of the day, but I think there's a time at the end of the day. Like if we said it, if there I worry if there were no cutoff at the end of the day, there are going to be people out there in the dark with their dog off leash anyway. Like in terms of enforceability, if it's like eight o'clock at night and you're out there with a headlamp, um, I I I think it would be fair at some point at the end of the day to say, okay, if you can get out there in the dark, then go for it. Uh, well, first, technically, the park is closed at dark. Just so you know, so um, so, so it says a lot of different. <laughs> they are, that question, I don't know when the park closes. They con <laughs> they're contradictory. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Um, so I think we talked a lot about. Um, you know, current park users and their access. I just wanted to highlight that one of the groups we also heard from a lot in our comments was elderly folks who do not come to the park because of stability reasons, because they did not want to get jumped up by a dog. So like, it's not just elderly people who have trouble walking their dogs on leash. It's elderly people who are not coming to the park because they do not want to get jumped on by a dog and lose their balance. Um, it's also people with young families, people with injuries or other, you know, instability issues with walking. Um, I think I could be in favor of doing a time-based proposal um, that still maintains most of the day on leash in the core zone. I think it's really important that the park is there when people need it. Um, and that they can use the park in a way that is safe for them. Um, so maybe like, you know, we've talked 8 a.m. I think 9 a.m. is about the latest I personally would support for establishing that cutoff. Um, I don't think if there's anything else I wanted to add at this point. Uh, I think that covers it until, well, we can get into the zone boundaries next if we think that makes sense. Oh, great. Andrew, you haven't said anything. <laughs> um, I'll try to do a little wandering. Um, you know, some, some points are made that have got me thinking while I'm sitting here. Um, and I think that going many months ago, um, when we first started contemplating a new management plan for the park, we knew we were getting that new parcel, the Heaney parcel. Um, <laughs> and then um, I, I kind of remember one of our meetings where we said, should we, should we dare to touch that third rail of dogs in the park? Um, and we, you know, eventually wound up with what was in the first management plan rollout, which was the two trails. But, you know, way back then, I, uh, uh, a friend and a colleague in town, um, I was telling him we were, we were working on this new management plan. And, and I said, we're, we're, we're considering, you know, whether we should have a look at the dog issue. And something Nolan said, you know, he, the, my friend said, well, we, we have a dog park. And I said, well, you know, he said, no, no, let me hear me out. We have a dog park right now. Um, dogs have super status up there. Um, you are, everybody's more than welcome to come to the park. 
but you do so knowing that dogs are maybe going to be run up to you, whether you want them to or not. Dogs have super status up there. And I, I remember that conversation. And at first it didn't really settle in. I thought, well, he's, he's overstating it a little bit. And, and, but I've come around to thinking that that's kind of what we have. We have a dog park right now. And so Charlie, you asked, you know, has it, has it, has a decision already been made? The answer is yes. <laughs> we, we did make a decision um, that we were going to do something. And that's where those two trails came from. Um, the, the survey that we came up, um, yes, it, it was slanted. Maybe it shouldn't have been, but it was, it was by design because the, and I know because I gave the directive to the park commission that, I mean, excuse me, to the dog commission, which was the park commission has made a decision. Our role here is to decide where and when. I think that was probably in the first five minutes of our meeting. So yes, the, 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 the survey did wind up reflecting that there was no straight up Yes or no question. Should we make any changes on the survey? Um, Is that ever, was that, sorry, I know. I'm yeah. Talking, but, is, was that ever posed to the general? Yeah, absolutely. Population? Yeah. In the preamble. No, yeah. No, to yeah. the general population. Uh, can we talk about the survey? After? Yeah, let me, yeah, yeah, let me, yeah, let me just keep going. To say. And so, um, you know, then it comes, so then it comes around to a, 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 another word bouncing around my head is equity. And, I, you know, through years now of, uh, you know, non-binding referendum questions on town meeting day and the surveys that we did and the thank you mountain of email <laughs> that we've been getting on this, I personally am way past the point of any reasonable doubt uh, that this is a small population that's being overlooked. It's not a small population, in, in my opinion. Um, and so, um, you know, the idea of equity is very important to me that there is a population of people who we need to think about and to as much as we can provide an accommodation. Um, you know, there, we're not doing, we did get people who don't want to deal with dogs in any manner whatsoever, ugly, and we're doing nothing. There's no discussion about doing anything there. And I'm not proposing that we do. I'm not. Um, I, I, still am am okay with the idea of erring in terms of the overall size of, of whatever we decide erring on the side of dogs more for dogs off leash still than on leash but i remain committed that we that we are going to do something and it needs to be significant for times where dogs are on leash so having said all that i i also agree that there we can we can, we can a good a good lawyer mediator would have us walking in one minute increments <laughs> to a time of day in the core when I think we might be able to agree on. That's my speech. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Was there somebody else in line, Dana? Or I'm only like I, like she here is now. <laughs> I wanted to. It looks like I don't know if there's a second page in Salon. There, there was a second page, but I don't uh, think we got free. Yes, there's a second page. It's also possible that it was left. Um, this is a compilation and I posted it. Is it on the table over there? Was there, is there a, was it like collated when it printed out uh, somehow? Or is it double-sided? Yeah, yeah. 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 I got a bag. Can I sign one of those? I think there's only one more. <laughs> yeah, I think there's Thanks. only one more. We can mind share. share. I mean, I don't really need it as double sides. Anyway, the chair did the same as well, and it just compiles all the suggested solutions that we got, just to like keep those on the radar, and also think about how all of the solutions that we are looking at include education, more signage, more hopefully like the creation of a of a new dog committee that would help to organize things like free trainings or. Um, maintaining a new dog creating and maintaining a new dog park things like that um so this is like what we've been discussing is really just one part of the solution um and i feel like there might be like the best elements of some of these suggestions could help maybe reach a better compromise um but yeah thanks so much um should we look at thinking about zones, whether there's times, no time, whatever, just zones? Where are the lines? 
Um, and I'm wondering, I've got the chart sharing. Should I, should we be looking at something else Matt. on a big screen? What, like a Thank blank, you. like, um, do you, can you do this one? This one is yeah, from the park. I'm going to stop website, sharing. I think, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Let me, let me just update the one on the website because the one on the website i just added the dotted line which was included in like the bridge article i had the one yeah you know it's not, that there. includes the dog area so the dog park but let me do you want to drop that into the chat and that one. oh yeah would yeah. that be faster yeah probably? can you is it a pdf yeah. just drag it into the chat and then we can grab it from there Also, just major props to Alan for all of the document wrangling and also yes. all the comment wrangling. Like, that is oh my God, that's saying level eight. The reading. <laughs> 75 pages, 76 pages. In oh, God, I know that. Google Doc. <laughs> I could start talking about the, the zone lines. I, I, I do like the. Um, the original zone because it excludes roads and excludes parking areas from being the line. I, I think the, you know, the alternate line that would kind of go close to the new shelter to the, what we're referring to as the dog field. I'm skeptical of making the boundary, these blind corners, these parking areas, these shelters, um, it sort of seems like kind of setting ourselves up for some some boundary issues where the original line makes it so you do have to either you know walk past out of roads or park and get out with your dog leash um, and move to that leash zone and then unleashed. I like the idea of you're going to have to start with your dog on leash and then you have to move to an area where you can then unleash. I think if the boundary was parking area by in you know in off leash place, people would just be have to open the door, let the dog run out across the boundary and say they're good. So that's where um, that's what I'm that's my my initial thoughts about these two two options. Sorry, Lincoln, I was typing up comments as you were saying what you were just saying. Seems not I, right. <laughs> I like the original um park staff proposal that came forward of having the you know that boundary be out of the the parking area and kind of further up in the north side of the park so but not including the current dog field. so not in, yeah I'm concerned yeah. I'm concerned about the boundary being at that you know blind corner and then also too close to the new shelter and having off-leash dogs interacting with the shelter interacting with the road and I feel the simplicity of that northern boundary would just eliminate the possibility of those conflicts. Mm -hmm. See, Jessa, um, are you, are you um, ready? I don't know. Ready. I feel like some process. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to figure out the best way to capture notes. Like it, maybe there's language. If we're talking about, um, well, they're both pink. I was there's the dotted line going? and the solid line. Dotted and solid. Can we use dotted for the smaller one and solid? Uh, yeah. Pro pro solid. <laughs> and you both um or maybe there's better i'm looking for some terminology to help with the notes and like guiding the conversation um what well, yeah i mean can, can we say original and alternate is that too biased is that clear that there is an original boundary proposed and then there was an alternate proposal okay so the original is solid lines yeah. mm -hmm. solid, and solid the lines. alternate is um dotted another way to say it say including the current dog field or not solid but it includes it and in what <laughs> but like in which side um, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i think um, yeah. drawing the boundary in the dotted versus solid lines right uh, yeah. yeah okay so i'm like what we're talking about yeah okay i'm just gonna that'll help organize i just wanted to organize there's how just, we capture there's the shorter content. words than we want to help yeah, it could type them quickly <laughs> Cool. Are you good to go? I'm ready. Okay. okay. Jessa. Um, I will speak up strongly in favor of the dotted um, because especially if we're looking at which sort of the types of trails available in the, I'll call it the Northern section, um, there really aren't very many short um, and safer or flatter loops 
um, that could be done off leash. I mean, I, I know I acknowledge you can walk on them with your dog on leash and then off leash them. Um, but that just seems to be presupposing kind of the worst intent in everybody rather than we understand, you know, there's already the rule about parking lots. Um, and so we don't, you know, or we don't let our dogs run out off leash um, as opposed to let's give somebody, some people, people some realistic actual circles they can walk um, to include the whole hem the hemlock to the seven fireplaces or the fitness to seven fireplaces. I think starting in the middle of trails, I think it's going to be a big compliance issue. I mean, I just don't think people are going to, they're going to think of those trails as off leash trails, regardless of where the signs are. Um, I actually just personally speaking, not reflecting the comments, don't have as strong of a feeling actually about the ball field itself. Um, though I know we did get comments about use of the ball field itself, but to me, at least starting at that spot also, you know, adds some safer loops. It adds parking in the winter, um, a little more accessible to people starting at a parking area. Um, or a better parking area. Um, so I am in favor of the dotted line. Um, I, I will throw out, I'm also, I think it is worth think, this group thinking about. Um, and I, I, I'm i not sure I have very many in the group with me on this, but some trail or off-leash option that starts further down at the um, Frog Pond parking area as well. I don't, you know, sort of north of Parkway Street, I don't think those trails are used very frequently and are sort of the highly trafficked family-friendly trails anyway. Um, I, so I think it could be done. I know it gets into complexity again, and we're, some people really don't want more complex, but I, I think that personally that I could see that being very reasonably done, like going through the ball field to get to the fitness trail. But that's my two cents. Um, I am also in favor of the dotted line. I think that um, solves a couple of the issues that we've been hearing about people wanting more direct access from their vehicles, people wanting more facilities that adds another outhouse within the off-leash area. Um, I do have some reservations just having the off-leash area so close to um, the new shelter, um, but I I think it's certainly worth a try to, you know, give people a little bit more easily accessible um, options to the off-leash zone to first start with the boundary there. Yeah, I guess I'll just respond a little bit to that because I do, you know, time and time again, we've heard we don't want this to be a slippery slope. And if we're doing something where it's like, well, it's, Let's try, let's try this and let's start here. And if it doesn't go well, then we'll push the boundary. I think people would have a hard time swallowing that than just starting with a further up boundary where we know there's not going to be conflict. And, you know, the idea of, you know, potentially putting a fence up, you know, I also am throwing in here as, as I don't, I can't, Matt, how would that also be the boundary of an off and on, you know, where we're trying to, con we're concentrating dogs or saying, go here, making the feeling of like a, pseudo dog park, but also making that the boundary with the road. Um, I just feel like it's, it's, there's just a lot that could go wrong there potentially. I hear you. Um, I do think we've also heard from a lot of people that, you know, we should, that doing something on a trial basis is okay. Um, we, as long as what we're saying is, you know, this is the zone boundary we're going to start with. There is a chance if there are too many negative interactions within that specific areas of the park that we shift to the original boundary proposed by Alec. I think that's more of like an adaptive management process than a slippery slope, as long as we're very clear from the beginning of what that alternate boundary would look like if there are too many incidents within that area. Um, I would like to know, like, I understand the concern about interactions on at shelters and roads or transitions, but I, I do know from the survey that we did, it does go back to like the, the pond tower trail. People really don't use that. And the trails 
not that it goes much to anywhere except for another road. And the trails around the the ball field and around behind old shelter that aren't on the sledding hill. Like those are very unpopular trails. I will say there is a child play structure um, right within that area. So I do think- By where the like- By the where the- And the, the, the needles on the field is. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like the best off leash zone to me because of that. I will just add into this. I think the thing that informs my thinking about this is thinking about sort of different groups of dog users and the people who want the like long ramble versus the people who want to just come and like pop out of their car and throw a frisbee for a little while and just like the different ways that people use parks the park with their dog. There's like a some different ways and thinking about thinking about having to go all walk all the way to seven fireplaces with your frisbee is not the same thing as I got out of my car and I walked. 20 feet and then we can have frisbee um so i am in favor of some kind of dog park area that's enclosed for dogs who want to do that in hubbard and i kind of don't care where it is like it could be at the current dog field it could be in the ball field maybe it's i don't know like i don't know it doesn't really matter to me because my dog hates that shit but like <laughs> other dogs think it's great she's like i refuse dog parks whatever um, they're not into it but other dogs it's like a super social and it meets a really good need for puppies and all of that so i don't know and i know i think the parks commission has said before that maybe this is actually a citizen thing that like citizens got together got to get together and organize and raise the money and do the thing um but I, I guess I would encourage some support and organization around helping that happen for like that specific use. I think if that need was met, then the Northern section might work better. Like just thinking about meeting that need kind of as a separate need from, I want to have a two mile ramble with my dog. That doesn't really like help. Add <laughs> this particular, is there, sorry. Is but there like, a way to add parking closer to the seven fireplaces? Like add parking past Alex's house? to open up more space in the Northern. But then, I mean, that's the most accessible trail currently within that zone is the seven fireplaces. Right, trail. so that you, you don't want to park there. Cars right, but that seven park that trail. on the trail. No, no, no. I mean, just like park a little further in that direction past new shelter so that people who are mobility challenged and driving into the park that need to access if Northern is the off leash. I think the park, do we use that like a staging area for a park needs right now? The area the between the parking at the new Yeah, or that's where all our equipment is. Yeah. We can move that equipment to the dog field. <laughs> yeah. And then you can move your equipment to the dog field. I think and part of the parking for the older people who need to get to seven fireplaces and use the north end could go where the equipment is. Equipment could go in the dog field. It looks like Kara maybe wants to speak to that. Is that good? I, the the question was addressed to Alec, but no matter where uh, people are going to have to park somewhere, put their dog on a leash and get to the off leash area, no matter what, because leashing is required in parking areas. Right? Yes. Yep. Okay. That's yep. true. Yep. So if you park at the new shelter, you only have to walk, oh, well, either 100 feet for solid line or perhaps 40 feet for dotted line. But regardless, you're going to have to put your dog on a leash at some point to get to the off-leash area if, yeah, not if. Yeah, unless you're walking into an off-leash zone. Right, from. And then the park right. doesn't matter at that end of the park. Yeah. Okay. Can I just ask the P on here? Um, near the dotted line. Is that the dog field parking? Mm, that's the new shelter. Shelter parking. I, I, the dog field parking is not. I penciled correct. in it. I penciled yeah, in another okay, P okay. at that sort of. It, the it would be kind of where that line right. ends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, it's yeah. at the bend. It's yeah, at the yeah. bend. That's right. Okay. So, I mean, I do think the dotted line does solve the, I mean, yes. And I think we get the common sense of like, don't open your trunk so the dog jumps into the road. Have your dog on leash, get onto the dog field. But like, then there's parking right there. I mean, I think that that does get that. Then you don't need more parking near the new shelter, probably, because you'd have two parking areas, except pretty accessible to off-leash areas. See, Alex. yeah, I mean the part about the zones that gives it's kind of giving me the most heartache is that we've all heard from people that feel you know like the area that's been identified as an off-leash zone is much less accessible. Um, 
And so, you know, to me, with its if there's you know, the awfully stall walking, whatever it is, there's it's a use that we're trying to promote. It's a it's a great thing. You know, it's great for people. It's obviously great for dogs, and anything that we're going to promote in our park, I feel like we should promote in a way that's as accessible as possible, provide a diverse, you know, range of opportunities. So as I've been pondering, you know, how to make, how to make the proposal that I put forward more accessible, I think, you know, making the dotted line is one of those ways. It's a good example of a way that we could tweak it. Like it adds to parking areas, like you're saying, I think we could really improve that fitness trail I think just psychologically, like being able to park at the dog field and have access very close to trails that are that feel like more, you know, stable, it feels significant. Um, I think there's some other ways we could make things more accessible, which we can come to later in the meeting. But I, uh, yeah, I feel like the accessible the dotted line feels more accessible to those who want to off, don't walk dogs off leash who are concerned about the quality of trails. Yeah. And thought in mind. <laughs> the other place, sure. Sure. just to point out like places that people access, a lot of people currently, for better or worse, are parking on Hubbard Drive and then walking into the, which isn't like official town parking or anything, but people park on the road and walk into the tower trails there. And in this proposal, you could walk in, take a left turn with your dog on a leash, walk 50 feet and then be in the off leash area. So I just want to point out that it's fair it's fairly easy access to the off leash area from that Hubbard Drive area as well. I do I do want to respond to that trail just in terms of and I know we've talked to Alec about this as the dog, short and steep short and steep is short and, is short and steep. Yeah. So to me and my in my mobility level that's great. It's still cuz that's where I park and enter the park the most. So it works for me. I know it does not work for everyone, which I guess is it is really what influences my support not necessarily to mess with the zone more mm -hmm. but the hours in the zone because i do feel like that's not you know for me personally that works fine it's a great trail i like going in that direction but um it's not it, it was and especially at certain times of year it gets pretty icy it gets pretty muddy which i think actually like when we talk about the new trail the new land acquisitions and establishing new trails a piece of that proposal, which we've tabled in order to talk about dogs, we would otherwise <laughs> be talking about that, is um, improvements to that. Tra There's a piece of that that connects with the new trail possibility, doesn't it? Uh, with the short and steep trail? Yeah, or that fitness, or is it the fitness trail on that side? Um, not no, no, okay. No, not okay. Not close, so. Okay. Um, it's almost eight o'clock. Can y'all believe it? Um, so I'm gonna make an attempt to like pull together some of the threads that we've been yep. hearing on the fly so you all can see how I'm doing. It seems to me that when we talk about zones, I'm hearing consolidation around the dotted line. Yes. Is, is as there opposed room for oh, okay, go ahead. Finish. Oh, go ahead. I mean, is beyond myself, is there any interest in talking about more like the ball field fitness trail area or no? Like the sledding hill. Uh, well, behind, behind, behind. Not, I understand the, you know, like a, a trail, like sort of, because I, I mean, again, not my personal concern, but from where I enter the park, but we certainly heard people entering from Winter Street saying that that's a long way to go. If you want to have a a quick off-leash experience, you'd have to, frankly, basically drive or um, get significantly into the park. Yeah, there was a comment at the previous public meeting that was saying if there's a zone closer to Winter Street, if there's like a corridor towards the back, or something so that, or for people who can only get in, like saying if people who would otherwise just walk and be near to the fog frog pond and leave will now be taking their cars up if they have to be, do something quick. So there was a policy argument that there could be a policy rationale for allowing some of the trails, ball field behind Sledding Hill, that type of thing be 
off leash part of the off leash section because then people who come in off winter who currently walk wouldn't be encouraged to drive by the new policy if they're in a hurry and don't have like more than a half hour to walk all the way to the back. Let's see, Kara. I I feel that and that at this point in the meeting to bring up like a pretty drastic change feels too big. But I don't know. I don't know if anyone knows. I think you both it is, spilled the beans. You might as well say it. <laughs> I don't, it it's just yeah. a, it's a pretty, it's like not any. It's of not an idea I've heard before or seen in the comments, um, but I mean, you know. People have yeah, 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 commented yeah. that. Yeah, some people have emailed that. It's a brand new idea. No, I mean, it's, it's not yeah. brand new, but it's not any of the options that we right. were well, looking I mean, at. It was brainstorming it was tweets, tweets yeah. the options. It's a tweet. Yeah, okay. yeah. sorry. I, Something we could do right now, process-wise, is to just take a temperature check on the dotted versus solid line and then take mm -hmm. a temperature check on adding mm -hmm. the corridor, just like these are two separate things. Mm -hmm. um, might be the way I would handle that. Let's do a show of hands. Um, you could do show of hands. We could also do fist to five. So five is, could we could do like five is, I love the dotted line option. It's so great. And fist is, I love the solid line option. It's so great. And then you can put yourself in the middle of that spectrum of like, Yes, dotted line, pretty much dotted line. I kind of don't care. Solid line, really solid. Like, does that make sense? Spectrum of things. So, and then you could just look around. And you just look, and we can see like what is the vibe quickly without having to like go around and talk about it. And then we can do the same thing. For Does that sound good? I just like yeah, jump in with great. the facilitation moves. Thanks, so. Do it. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> good. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> thanks for all the meetings. What do you welcome to my life? Community organizing. Um, okay, so five, think about it in your head. Five is I love this the dotted line option. This is no, I want the solid line option. Between the dotted and the solid. Yeah. We, to, we'll do the like quarter access off leash trail question separately. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yeah. Swap paper scissors. <laughs> <laughs> So we look around. <laughs> Dotted line is the five, then Diana still has some butter hands. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that just gives you a sense. People can look. What does a mm -hmm. corridor look like? It could be a trail. Is that one trail? Yeah. That goes yeah. The back of the, the, I think. I mean, I think like the stage, like the most to the back trail. It still would involve intersecting with. The shelter though right no because yeah. there's that dip behind the shelter you go behind the stage you go around through the back and it's not a trail that's written on this paper but it's a trail that's there the one that goes it's not very it's it's you got to be a little sporty to do it because it goes like hairpin up and then it really steep down and then really steep up and then it goes steep down again and then you come out towards the dog field but you stay like behind the shelter behind the shelter by like a chunky amount of yards, like half, a, not not all the way to the like half line of the football playing field, but like how many trail intersections are we dealing with in that area? Well, you come up from the if you're coming up from Winter Street, you go through that muddy, weird, icky part. Then you go past where they used to have the tents. Then you cut and before the ball field, and then you go up that steep hill. Then you go behind the stage. So you're not really intersecting with much. I'm going to uh, you, yeah, amend, and then, and then, amend that a little bit, because if you were to go up that way, there's, because of the maze, that's the maze area, I think that we're referring to, there's, I mow it a lot. So I'm trying to, one, two, four that go <clears throat> west from there, then that would include the whole ball field would essentially be off leash now. Um, up, then there's one, two, three around the stage area. And the stage, a lot of people I've observed who take that trail just cut through behind the stage. So that would sort of open that whole area up. Um, and then there's, Two, 
do more like behind the old shelter near that dip. Yeah, so yeah. all intersections that would need to be signed. Yeah, and it would also open up some pretty large areas to off leash. Be like through the ball field, it's not a trail, it's just open. Which becomes the shelter area, you know. The, the, the stage. Stage. stage, yeah. And the stage and area. And it also seems very easy for a dog. Like when I've been at the shelter for birthday parties or whatever, there are regularly dogs that just kind of wander through. And I, I think they're using what you've described. Like, you know, I hear their owners calling like dog. And I think they're supposed to be on that trail and they've just kind of wandered over to the sledding hill or whatever. And it feels like just manage that that just would be kind of challenging with the amount you know, people sledding at birthday parties, like dogs wandering in and out. This kind of like helps to ha keeping that in the on leash space solves that complex. Right. You could alternatively, you could go off up on tower trail, zip across the road, go through natural area trail, leash your dog briefly and hop on a steep and short or whatever. Yeah, it's short and steep. Short and steep. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're circling back to the issues that were identified in the Parks Commission original proposal, though, when we're looking at things like corridors through the on-leash area. We're talking about more opportunities for conflict, more signage. I just don't... I, I just have a hard time with that because, I mean, those are the points that the dog committee itself raised about our original proposal. Do you like enough of the temperature check just verbally, or do you want to do that? I will rescind my proposal with a comment <laughs> that I think it, um, to me, then it's the balance then of hours of accessibility in that space. Like if we're going to say, okay, it's it's too complicated to start parsing trails, it feels like people who enter from different parts of the park and need different experiences close so they don't need to drive should have a reasonable amount of time available in that zone. And then maybe that to a large, to at least enough extent mitigates the sort of not having access at all though driving. Um, that you should be able to get to that part, some part of the day. Did we bring that up as a con when we're talking about zones? We say that it might increase traffic to like through mm -hmm. like to the furthest away parking. No, that's, yeah. that's, that's a, a good thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll increase car traffic too. Yeah. Yeah, temperature check on another random idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um I'm just curious what people think about like so that the 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 P that as I mentioned before, like I feel like the folks that are really losing with this proposal are people that feel like they can't walk in in the area that we've defined as off leash. Um you know, a lot of people read Willem's article over the weekend, you know, so we could run with that as an example, but he's certainly not alone. Like, I think we've received commentary from people like Pat Ashabald and Bob. Or, I mean, you know, you've mentioned it yourself in person. So, um, like, is there a way to support those people with this activity that's so important and healthy, especially for aging population, um, without creating too much complication and changing the zones and doing times? Like, for me, like, able-bodied people, can get to the north end of the park. It's really awesome there. Uh, we could certainly make improvements to it for everybody, but could we have like a way to provide somebody like, I'm just using Willem as an example, like Willem has a dog that is not gonna bother anybody as a number of other people do. He's an aging adult. He can only utilize these accessible trails. Can we like give him a golden ticket? Like, can we give him? <laughs> and I don't know what the process would be to like vet those yeah. people. Uh, so, so, anyways, that's my temperature check. I haven't, you know, it's just to what do people react to that? I think people think it's a terrible idea. That's fine. I mean, I think it's a great idea, except that people that have, you know, phobias of dogs or fears of dogs aren't gonna be reassured by seeing a handkerchief around a dog's neck or a golden ticket. I think they're still gonna, you know, not come to the park if there's a chance they're gonna interact with an off-leash dog, even if it's an extremely well-behaved off-leash dog. Yeah, yeah, I I agree, and that's yeah, as almost hesitant to propose it because for me, 
I've always been on the side of clarity in this discussion. Yeah. And, and I also think that perception is more important than reality in this case. So mm -hmm. if people perceive, they think they're gonna encounter off-leash dogs, they won't come. Whereas if it's clear, if people can feel certain that they're not going to, uh, then they would come, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It just- Well, that's where it seems like maybe the zone with some kind of window of time could be that golden ticket, essentially, like where like, you know, like, okay, till eight, till nine, like, I don't know what the time is, but that you can maintain that experience and that space. And granted then like the person who doesn't want to encounter dogs and wants a morning walk, doesn't feel like they could go to the core area in the morning. But my guess is if they went to the Northern part in the morning, when the core is open to off leash, they'll encounter way fewer dogs because everybody's getting their off leash time in that core. Yeah. at that time i don't know and, and for and for every person like will and there's another person like him who feels they can't come to the park right because yeah we can't and it's sad to think about them. this person losing this access but it's countered by what's somebody gaining. else who's yeah. going to be gaining access yeah. yeah and that's where like the time maybe like creates that space i don't know i don't know so you're saying that would be that the time zone in the core zone is off leash the northern zone would be on no leash. no 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 quiet. Okay. it would Not just be too. quieter yeah. right because i would think if i wanted to have a dog off leash and i knew that the car core, core was just open off leash until eight or nine or something high. that's where i would go at that time totally. get yeah. that in and then in the evening i know like okay I'm, i've got to go to the northern end so that mm -hmm. it would make the morning it would relieve the pressure of the northern part yeah. Except it's still technically off leash. So I wonder if people who are worried about dogs would still. Not. Yeah. I don't know if it would accommodate that, but then they'd have at least the core from, you know, eight for the rest of the day or nine to the rest of the day or something. So, yeah. Also, Kara and Jessa, and then I just want to do a time check on this meeting. Thanks, okay. Dana. <laughs> um, I had a thought. I think, I think it got resolved about the golden. <laughs> sound is like um and i'm also wondering yeah if, if the if the time in the zones is um there's still gonna need to be a lot of signage mm -hmm. and i'm like just wondering the visuals on that and the simplicity factor just putting that out there like that like at, at first, you know, I could picture the the about to enter zones that, that Alec has mentioned, and now you're entering it. You know, the I think you mentioned like a fifty foot buffer or something, or thirty foot, like to let people know if, if they need to put their dogs on a leash or that they're about to be able to let them off. And I'm thinking of like all the places that we're going to need that up to nine a.m. sign, and if like it's going to mm -hmm. make sense. That's all. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, oh, can I let Jessica go? And then Andrew? Great, you're keeping better track today. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the sort of, and I know a lot of people sort of threw out the, exam, the suggestions of kind of training, proof of training or good behavior. I do, I do think that's a tricky one. I think it's tricky. Um, what would the requirements be? Who can afford the training? Who can, who, if you're visiting just for the day, how do you get it? Like I, mm -hmm. I love the the concept and I think, you know, it's great to offer, you know, an incentives for good behavior and training, but I, I think any kind of like seal of approval is going to be pretty tricky. I, I just think that would be pretty complicated. Um, I do, I mean, I, I would say on the, the time signage, and maybe I'm thinking of this too, too simplistically, it would, in my mind, if there are hours that would go on the same signs as the zones. Like wherever you sign, this is an on leash zone. It would just be on leash after X time. So I maybe again, maybe I'm missing a piece of that, but I feel like everywhere there would be a sign for the zone, it would just add a time component to the same sign. Maybe I'm. Yeah, I think. Sorry. Can we do Andrew and Diana, and then if you can hold on to it? Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm. It's eight, but I'm. I'm more than willing to stay. I don't know how others feel, but this is a next question should... meeting. Yeah, okay. go late. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so I, just in the interest of something that you want, I'm going to throw out an idea. And I, I'm not saying I'm for this 100%, but northern part, off leash all the time, core with dotted line, off leash until noon.
I like it. Can we take a temperature <laughs> check? <laughs> oh, temperature check. That's a Zoom check. Well, let's zero do it. Let's do it. No, let, let's discuss. It's just, discuss. it's just something on the table. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of options. There are a lot of times out there. We're just start. We're starting to get into like a lot of nitty gritty idea time, which I think could go kind of indefinitely. And I'm just gonna name that that like we are not yeah. with with picture yeah. at all. And I want to honor Diana and then Stephanie, and then we can figure out. What mm -hmm. it. I was gonna say the same thing as Jessa. I mean, if we have to define what the core is anyway. The, the sign has to be there defining that boundary. Just bad times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess we haven't exactly talked about how this rollout would look in terms of some image, <laughs> um, which seems like too big of a can of worms to open right now. But kind of the way I envisioned it would be at all the park entrances, there's a map that shows the two zones. And then when you actually are crossing over a zone, there's a sign that says unleash here or leash here keep it as simple as possible. And I could see adding to that unleash here after 9 a.m. or before 9 a.m., whichever. But um, I, but in thinking of the signs that way, I could get behind a, you know, a single block of time in the morning, um, but not like, you know, unleash before nine, unleash again after five. I just think that gets a little too complicated sign-wise. Um, so I think whatever it is, is just for one part of the day as we talk about times. I will say this, the sign could say on leash nine to five, which is not like instead of saying the four, true. you yeah, could yeah, just yeah, say yeah, nine yeah. to five, like right. mm -hmm. less characters. Right, right. Yeah. I think we could solve the sign piece. We're, I think we should, uh, personally, I think we should focus on what we think is the right policy and then uh -huh. make the sign work. So then, not take 11 people to write a sign. Yes. <laughs> Please do God. So just to, I, I'm feeling like some room consolidation around zones in some way. And within zones, the dotted line is kind of what the fingers told us, right? Mm -hmm. And so then the question is, within the zones dotted line, is there also a time overlay so if it is eight o'clock, it's after eight o'clock. Okay. So do we want to talk about the variation of times and see like, is it eight? Is it nine? Is it noon? Like see if we can find a, a, a time that seems like it works. And then maybe we leave this saying it's zones or it's zone with this time and marinate and sit on that for another week. Does that seem like- Can we just figure out how much longer people are willing to stay? And it sounds like what I'm hearing from you, Kasha, is like, can we leave this meeting with a really clear proposal all nailed down is what I'm hearing that you want to come out of this. Well, one. and I feel like that's it. fair to the public because otherwise we leave the meeting right. and we say like, oh, there are like mm -hmm. umpteen different mm -hmm. options. Yeah, so I think people should have the chance to say, you know what, like zones are great, zones are not, you know, like know what we're thinking. So I, I think that seems fair to me. Can, can I add, so I I still have a, not a concern. If, it, if we can get close to like, this is what the park commission might be putting on the table for the ne next Monday. Yeah. Personally, I think that would be preferable to kind of leaving open two options. Like it sounds okay. like, like zone versus zone with time. I feel like it's most fair to the public to say like, this is what we're going to be voting on next Monday. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. So do we want to talk about zones with times or are we not really interested in times and we just want to talk about zones because we could skip the time if that's let's do zones with time. Zone yeah. time. So let's talk about yeah. zones yeah. with time. Yeah. So let's let's talk about times that I've I've been trying to capture. Some I've heard no later than eight, I've heard until noon, I've heard nine tossed around. And then I've heard this like nine to five. Those are kind of the things that I've I actually said 10. Um, so with all those options, let's let's focus on that. Like what would a time be? And we're talking okay. about the four. Can I ask, are we are we going in the direction of saying it's only morning? for off leash in the core and not evening or not bookends of the day. Um, I think that's open. Yeah. That's what this is. It's like, what is what are the times? If there's an overlay of times, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. 
I will just put out for whatever the morning start time is. I think it has to be reasonable to the not just super early birds, mm -hmm. um, including people who don't, you know, work really early in the morning. I don't think there's a lot of park use or like need for like, you know, I, I think that I think it should be a fair start time. I don't think it should be set like seven or eight a.m. I just think is. Yes, you're, there are the few people who are out there at 7 a.m., but that is not the majority, I think, of sort of folks who are giving a morning walk to their dog. Mm -hmm. I think um, something like 11 to 4 on leash in the core. Sorry, I'm having to send a personal text message, so I'm not doing stack for like a few <laughs> minutes, and then I will, but like yeah. it's the anarchy till then, or someone else can be in charge. <laughs> Which would imply 11 to 4 off leash in the northern section. Are you talking about flipping oh, the time? And then you're or and then like this? Flipping the zones? Are you saying you'd be on leash before 11 in the northern section? Yes. So the on leash for people that want dogs on leash have an opportunity during that time frame to have have some place to go. Exactly. So uh, and then what does that imply? Two sided sentence. Two sided sentence. <laughs> A lot of words. That yeah. implies <laughs> um, early morning until eleven off leash in the core, and four o'clock on off leash in the core. And then on leash during those times up to 11 after four in the northern section. I like that that provides space for everybody at all times, but that seems really to lose the simplicity, which we've heard. I mean, and the dog committee said whatever, you know, we need something simple. We keep hearing that from the public. That seems like it might. I, li I like that it's like room for everybody, but it sounds like it's getting edging towards complicated. My it, also, it also strikes me that the kind of steeper trails in the north section are the kind of trails that are in North Branch. People like walking in that kind of environment with on leash dogs, they can go there. So thinking about times, um, I heard Jesse, you said not seven or eight a.m. That's too early. I heard some heads nod. So then nine a.m. I guess it depends on, are we talking about a book? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I actually like Andrew's like split the day. And I think that was where Emily started mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. Like, it, can we just do half the day? Okay. I'm going to go back to taking comments. In my <laughs> no, it's great. It's you, you <laughs> Sorry, I, I, just, I just wanted to make sure Kara got a chance. So Kara, and then I saw Lincoln yep. and then I saw Emily. No, did not see Emily. Great. You're all helping me. This is good. Okay, Kara. So if I'm doing the math right if we're doing half the day off leash in the southern zone basically three quarters of everything would be off leash there'd be a half day on leash in half of a little well, less than half of the park mm -hmm. yeah. and i don't know from a from an equity standpoint, that doesn't seem anything close to what we were trying to accomplish, if, if we're seeing that right. I agree. I, I don't think the half day goes far enough. I think the northern section of the park should be off leash all the time. And that should be there for people who can access it. And then, you know, a way to get there for people who want or, you know, a mellow air trail, as we've been talking about. And then in terms of a time overlay, if we're going in this direction and, you know, I, I think it does make sense that it's, I think, the most complex of the issue of the solutions we've been talking about. But I, I do think it has the potential to please the most people. I think having an opportunity in the morning and I, personally, I'm going to that 9 a.m. That's sort of where in my mind, you know, the majority of the day is dedicated to people who want to use the park and not experienced dogs off leash feel some ownership over that core area. And then there's this whole other set of the park that's off leash all the time. And there's even time in the morning up till 9 a.m. 
that's going to be off leash everywhere. And if I don't want to see dogs off leash, I can't go to the park, you know, at all during that time. So for excluding people, you know, for an entire, you know, the entire park for some hours, let's keep it short and then let's open it back up and make it accessible and, and, you know, really get at these people who aren't going to the park. So that when they see this proposal, they say, this is for me, this isn't a performative, this isn't, you know, three quarters thing. This is like, we get a chunk of the park and I know when it, I know when it is, I know where it is and I can get to it and I'm going to come now. And I wasn't before. Can you say it again, what you're proposing? Yeah, I'm, propo uh, yeah, I'm proposing the, the time overlay. And, you know, so in the morning, it would be off leash everywhere in the park until 9 a.m. And then we'd move to on leash in the core with the dotted line. I think that could potentially work, but I, given the response we've gotten, I feel, I, I still kind of feel like the, given the context that like people only have, Hover Park for off like off leash dog walking and anybody who doesn't want to interact with dogs can go to like any other park in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. That might be a hard sell. Just be, it's it feels like because there's so much other park land available for that kind of use that slightly less. Than... But the north is available at all times. Yes, mm -hmm. we're you know we got I, one Hover Park. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna say Stephanie and then Kara. Um, you know, people keep bringing up North Branch as part of this conversation, so I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, I think pedestrians are a little bit edged out at North Branch because of the mountain bike situation there, and I don't think it provides the same experience as Hubbard Park does to walkers, with or without dogs. Um, so to say that people can just go to North Branch I, I don't think that really is the reality of the situation for many people. I certainly do not feel safe taking a toddler in the branch with those bikes whizzing around. Um, so I am in favor of what Lincoln proposed. I think 9 a.m. Um, is very reasonable for the four zone. I'm going to do Kara and then Andrew. Um, I was basically going to echo what you said and also. I don't know if it's going to open a can of worms, but I do see a lot of people walking their dogs up at the Elks Club. Mm -hmm. Elks Club. Yeah, but they're doing something. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I know. It's a can of worms. It's Andrew. Stephanie, I was thinking, I mean, another way to test that theory is to let's make North Branch off leash all the time. North Branch off leash? Sure. Off leash all the time. How do you swap, think Swap parts is what I'm saying. Swap parts are going to feel about that. They've said they don't it make, a, it may, it it may Hubbard on leash all the time. We are, and North Branch to... River Park is a city park. North Branch Nature Center is a different right. entity. Right. Right. I feel the know. Branch, yeah. um, sorry. Sorry. Can we do Jessa yeah, and yeah. 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 Lincoln? And then Emily? Um, so again, I not I I honestly don't have like the right feel like I have the answer of when after 9 a.m. But I do think the most of respondents we heard with concern about this zone proposal are older folks who are concerned about the mobility in those northern trails. And I don't think 9 a.m. before 9 a.m. is when at least the folks I know who fall in that demographic are walking their dogs. I think a 10 or 11 a.m. I I think would it, I, again, I, people might not be happy. People, I know there are people who really want the noon, but I would say at least 10 AM to give people like a chance to wake up and do a morning walk who are not again, the young hop out of bed folks, um, in that space. Those are just the ones we heard, I think over and over in the comments who would be really feel like they don't have a place they can go to safely walk, um, in the Northern section. So I would push for again, at least a 10 AM minimum. Yeah, real quickly, I mean, you know, I just want to go back to sort of like the idea of or the need that Montpelier has for an actual dog park. And I think Dana said it nicely. I, I agree with you up until the in Hubbard Park. I think there's other places where this could be done. I think it should be a community campaign with the city of Montpelier. I think the Parks Commission is here to assist. And I don't want to see all the momentum and participation that's gone into this effort just drop off. I'd love to see that go into, OK, let's actually find a space 
with parking that's flat that people can have that experience of park let your dog out let it run or run, will run around we're talking about doing the off-leash walking that hubbard has to offer but i just don't want to mix those too much and i'm you know adding in the idea of okay if we're going to do with this dotted line let's do away with the fence idea because i think that gets at trying to be everything to everyone and saying hey we have this false sense of security here we're saying bring bring you know your dogs there's a fence here but we're also saying that it's a boundary between a not fenced area. It's an intersection with the road, it's a parking area. I think we should drop the fence and I think we should find a place outside of the park to do a four fence, you know, in a real dog park and have the people who are going to use it help raise the money to maintain it because it's a huge ask for maintenance. It's it's not something the park staff should have to be responsible for. And Hubbard Park, I don't think the train is suitable. And I think we have suitable areas outside of the park. So I just wanted to put that on the record, and I know it's a little bit of side side rails. Can can we do? Did you have a thing, Emily? I did. Um, um, so it was it was relating to. Um, I just wanted to say that, like, yes, like people could go to North North Branch for like similar trails, and I agree completely with you. So I mean, it's not the same work walking experience there. We also have like all of our other little parks. We have the. Um, the bike trail along the river, those are all, they're all on leash areas, so. And then Robin, and then. I would just like to say, like it's come up a lot in comments on from Forge Forum and that type of thing that there should just be a dog park, but it is a very different thing to have a dog park than it is to have a park where you can walk off leash with your dogs. Yes. And yeah. the thing that I see as a public policy good for Montpelier in having off-leash walking space is that we Vermont taxpayers have to pay for the health of our elderly. And the more that their mental health and physical health, if the dog walkers is getting out in the park, fantastic. And I get it that we need to offer some physical mental health activities for non-dog older people to also get to the park. But to park a bunch of people into a fence little yard and watch as their dogs stare at each other and then have a poop problem that's concentrated, sure, but like has a different level of maintenance mm -hmm. is it's not the same. Like Hubbard is the backyard of Montpelier, but it's also like the woods. It can make us all feel like we actually live in Palace and can be like running around and seeing deer and all of those things. So I just think like dog park is not the same mm -hmm. and like, compensating for off-leash time by saying you could go over here in a fence is not the same either. Um, yeah, but I support what Jess is saying of that the morning time, I think it would, like if it could push back further into the morning so that people who are like not out the door for an eight or 9 a.m. work start, like who are slow, the slower have a chance. Because I also don't know of, like, it would be, like, we've talked about implementing plans and what it would look like, like, if we did a pilot or tech things. And I know that I, I'm really curious to see, like, once we change it and say this is on leash only, like, do the clickers change? Is there, like, a mass influx of people into the park? Like, are there really going to be a bunch of people who come into the park? And is it really going to change it? It, and are there not going to be a bunch of new people coming into the park because they can't get there between nine and 10? Our clickers are already not showing great volume at that time anyway. So on the times and on like the whole, there's like different ways to look at the equity, but yeah, I don't think it would hurt to push a little later into the morning. So I'm just wondering what the peak like times were in the survey and with the clicker data. So I thought nine to 10 the was one of the peaks. Very consistently across nine to five, like there was some fluctuation, but it was like very, very similar in the nine to five of people who took the survey. The clickers is different. We could go back and look at some dog committee notes. Yeah, I don't have that with me, so I'm sorry. Yeah. But the survey only started at not right, like it also yeah. was influenced by how we divide so it. Was it was in time. time. So that was right. Yes. The question that was most broken based on like the yeah. 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 question was the, 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 the app like didn't allow people to and you couldn't take so right. right. That one is the one to be most taken with a grain of salt. Um, Alec, did you have 
I think to respond. Yeah, um, this isn't my comment, but I just want to state for the record, like about the dog park, because I'm not sure it's ever been like definitively stated for the public. I think we've had separate conversations about it, but like we have a long standing policy that we would support a dog park. The city would support a dog park. But like somebody was saying, you know, it's on the responsibility of dog owners to create said dog park. And in my 10 years here, there have been at least two efforts to do that. Dog groups, the dog owners have gotten together, try to find a place, raise the money. That's how most towns do it. Like that's how Waterbury does it. That's how Hartford does it. I have the bylaws for that. Like I contacted those other towns to find out like their bylaws. Mm -hmm. We've gotten like pretty far down the road, but never crossed the finish line for a dog park. And I don't know why, you know, but it's possible that people are just like, there's not sufficient momentum because Hubbard Park is basically a dog park already. Um, and, you know, I agree with everything that Robin said about, you know, they're not, it's not apples to apples. Like it's, it's a different thing. And I think we should just table. Mm -hmm. people <laughs> yeah. So, but I just want to state for the record that like those conversations have been had and there's people who are like, what about a dog park? It's like that, that about a dog park. Like that is what has happened Great. and could happen again. There's nothing standing in the way of creating a dog park other than a group of people. Um, so what I wanted to say, my comment was, um, I agree with what you were saying, Jessa. Like for me, the goal is to create more accessibility, all the health benefits of people walking dogs off leash. And I don't think we're going to achieve it with a 9 a.m. Um, like what I observed this, you know, is I, I think just based on our knowledge of the park, I'm agreeing with you that we probably wouldn't hit, you know, the, those people unless, um, you know, they, they're willing, they're able to change their behavior. Um, I'm not in favor of any hours thing. I'd rather see like more efforts made to create more accessible trails in the, in the off-leash zone um, than to, because I think, you know, you keep edging the hours more and more and more and, and and it just, you know, creates kind of an inequitable balance of who is this part for. Um, but that, I, I do, I feel like that population is is one that I am focused on and I don't have the solution, the, but the hours one doesn't seem like one that I, that I would stand behind. Is it about hours? I feel like yes. it's great. It's like, <laughs> just to make sure that now we are just talking about hours. Um, 11 to 4 on leash mm -hmm. in the core. My concern about having the northern section always off leash is, first of all, um, the conservation committee had concerns about that, and so do I. And also, when things are, trails are added, a parking lot is added, people who don't want to interact with off-leash dogs in the northern section are going to want to use those enhanced opportunities there. And so, therefore, they would want on-leash dogs in order to do that. So, 11 to 4, on-leash in the core. 11 to 4, off-leash in the northern section. And then everything else is flipped. Stephanie, did you have something? I, you I mean, I'm here. just really in favor of consistency and simplicity. I think I just struggle with the implementability about that. I mean, we heard from so many people in, in the survey comments and in emails that it needs to be simple. It shouldn't be involved flip-flopping. We even heard it shouldn't involve any times. Um, so I that's not a proposal I would vote for. I'll just put myself in here. Something I've been thinking about is like, would you, mm, what, is, what is the right, right way to put this? Like if it, if I want to walk my dog off leash and I'm like, sweet, on leash hours from 11 to 4, that sounds great. Like, I don't go at that time. Like, would I be okay if it was flipped the other way at like as a as a gauge of equity? Like, would I feel good about only having 11 to 4 as access to the park? Like, what if that was me? What if that was me who only had access during that time? So, like, I guess my step back is like, think about being the person who can only access at this time we're proposing and then think about being the person who can only access at this time. And like, how does it feel from both sides? Mm -hmm. um, which is the gauge that I'm trying to use. And like, so that doesn't feel good to me, 
11 to four, if I'm like, that's the only time I can go, like, great, this is like bathrooms as they colored on them, like, cool, <laughs> you know? Um, I have a place to pee. It's not as great. Like, um, so that's the thing where I, like, I just, as a dog owner, I feel like I'm constantly in this conversation having to weigh, like, what is good for me and my dog against, like, what is good for the whole city of Montpelier. And I just, like, have to, like, keep bringing myself back to that. So I'm saying it out loud. So hopefully everyone, maybe you all are doing out already because you're magic, but, like. Ties in nicely to the Parks Commission mission, our mission, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's it's really hard because we're all individual people with all of our own needs and our own experiences and all that. But I'm trying to do a, like, put myself in the shoes of the elderly person with the dog, put myself in the shoes of the elderly person without the dog, put myself in, et cetera, et cetera. So then what would you recommend? I don't know yet, but it is less, it is, I'm bouncing back and forth between 9 a.m. and earlier or no times. I don't oh, know. I'm still, weekends. I'm still listening. I'm still listening. On leash for weekends. What about off leash on weekends? <laughs> well, I mean, most people, most dog walkers don't go on the weekends because there's so many people. That I just go the for the weekends. Time. Most of us don't go on the weekends. Makes sense. It's actually... easy. Throw it out. It's done. You guys don't have to meet again. <laughs> I mean, the dog committee did talk so about a week, a weekday, weekend thing. difference. Because we think the most time, like the, the non current non visitors, probably most would want to go on the weekend. Yeah. So we, well, but we do, but again, that. in terms of the signage and I think I, how simple. I, I don't know what, that we can make that assumption because I think there are people who are like, we're, I mean, a lot of, I go walk in the middle of the day. I work from home. I go walk in the middle of the day. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's three. Um, but it's usually during my work day. Um, when I had a dog, I would bring my dog. She's passed away. I'm there by myself now. But I would assume that there are plenty of people also working during the day who would like to walk during the day, during the week. And they don't go there during the week. They don't incorporate it into their week work day. And so I, I don't think we can assume that more that the people not going now really want access just on the weekends. We tried to ask that with the survey. That's the part that didn't work. Yeah, we yeah. we we were actually really curious so about the weekday days. weekend split. How much mm -hmm. and how quickly could we build an accessible trail in the north? And how much would it be? And how fast could it be done? So when we say accessible, do we mean like built to like the universe like, accessible like standard? Like Willem and Key, Key can go walk in an accessible trail in the north end that goes further than that little bit of seven fireplaces. Yeah, so an accessible trail like we built in, you know, where it is, um, it's quite expensive. You know, it's basically like building a road. How much? It costs, it costs like over $100,000 to build that trail. Um, it's not money that's in any budget or any grant or, you know, we'd be starting from zero. So to create that level of trail and it's designed to very specific standards, like less than 5% slow, all this stuff, you know, we don't have to go to standard, but big pick, you know, big picture point is like, it's expensive. Um, and we had, you know, specific reasons for building it there. So um, to create a trail that is, is you know smooth free of rocks and roots that's like a natural surface that's not a gravel surface like we could do that this summer but i, I want to be crystal clear that we we cannot create a universally accessible trail such as the one that we made i mean we would be lucky to do it next summer if we were like full court press this is the most important thing for us mm -hmm. to do i think we'd be years out of creating so i mean to create that trail the city got a you know citywide ADA assessment, so we we identified that as a need. There was multiple rounds of grant funding, you know, and then you're waiting for agreements and parks commission approval, and then the public meetings, and then the contractor wasn't available, so we did it the following year, and then you know it's still not done. Like it goes it's supposed to go to the tower, so, so we've we really probably special. been working on it for six or seven years. <laughs> it's still really expensive. Yeah, and it's in the south in the core. Yeah. Yeah, Kara has her hand up. Um, so the other trail that you mentioned that could get created this summer, like what what could you compare that to another trail in the park, just so people would have an idea of how? Oh, I'm just saying like the fitness trail, like we could improve mm -hmm. the fitness trail. But, but the new, and then the the new trail, trail though, and then how would it feel once it was done? Um, so uh, you know, basically exactly how it's described in the management plan. 
just like a boulevard type of trail, wide, free of roots and rocks and general obstacles. Um, and are you talking about upgrading the fitness trail or you're talking about adding a new trail to the new expansion? No, no, I'm not talking about adding. I'm okay. talking about up upgrading okay. the, the fitness trail. Yeah. Cool. No, we don't we don't have any new trails planned for you know of that level of build for the uh, So the ones the can you tell us a little bit about the ones planned for the new expansion and like the general grade and oh yeah, sure. Oh those ones. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. So those are um, kind of just gonna be a similar look and feel to um to the trail. Like stream side by side? No, you know, the, the problem with those, the problem with every trail in Hubbard Park is that it was created by user activity. It wasn't mm -hmm. created by a thoughtful trail designer. <laughs> so the universally accessible trail is the first one that we have in all of Hubbard Park that's like designed and built by a trail designer. Um, every other trail is just like people are like, I want to go this way. And that's why all the trails are muddy. They're, they don't carry water well. They often go on the fall lines. So. I think that the trails that we build in the new shelter in the new area will be, at least, you know, if it's left up to me, will be much higher quality than a lot of the other trails in Hubbard Park because they'll have, you know, proper, they'll be built and designed properly. Um, but a similar width to like the, a lot of the trails that we have now. I would say like a similar width to like Cliffside Trail or something mm -hmm. like that. Maybe not like to the extent of the fitness trail, mm -hmm. but, you know, a three to five foot trail track. With a much wider corridor. And that is the part you walk on, and then the corridor is the part like if you held your arms out. But so you're not whacking trees. Yeah. yeah. And one of the advantages of that into new parcel, the southern end of the new parcel, is that it has a natural, much lower grade. And so it allows for access into seven fireplaces at a much more gradual right. route than like the cliffsides. There it's not a hill, it's a very gradual valley. So yeah, but the topography yeah, yeah. allows for ease. Beer. And what about like I, I? I think I like people are talking about the northern trails as like more rugged, and I think if you just looked at the trails, like if you take out take out the roads that people drive on, take out the accessible trail, like if you just look at the trails, I would say that the northern part is equal or better to the southern part. Like think about the trails on the southern part, like Pond Tower Power Trail, like terrible. Um, you know, the trail through the meadow that can be clay, muggy, muddy, um, short and steep trail. We've talked about issues like there's our trails have issues like <laughs> that's a well-known problem that we face as a maintenance. You know, it's a maintenance problem. Um, and I would say the trails in the northern part have similar issues. Um, but the, it, the what I see and what I perceive is like people are used to walking on the roads they're used to walking you know if there's just this perception that the south is so much more accessible and then we built the accessible trail you know like unfortunately at the time that we built it like we didn't define like who this is for but at this point it's like really valued by older adults who like to walk their dogs off leash <laughs> um and so now we're you know we're grappling with that people feeling that's being taken uh, so, you know, but I feel like the actual trails, like the natural surface trails are pretty comparable throughout the park in the sense that they're like, not that great. <laughs> Spoken by the park's director. <laughs> a, pass. Yeah. a pass, a pass. A pass, okay. Tasha, where are we? It's 8.42. <laughs> um, I've been in bed by 8 o'clock every day for the last week. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so um, I, okay, so um, I'm feeling like we have the dotted line space we talked about, consolidating there. I'm feeling, I, I hear, when I'm hearing people talk about times, I'm hearing more consolidation around like a 9 a.m., which I know is not what you all were talking about, but if it, it feels like that is surfacing more. Um, I don't know if we want to do like a finger check on a couple of times. What do you think? Um, we do it for a couple different times. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Right, just started. This might be, it's just a very quick go around where you say your preferred time. Okay. And and you don't add a like two minutes of talking about it. You just say your preferred time and get them all. Write it on a piece of paper. Okay, okay. Oh, I'm ready. Preferred time when when on leash starts. When yes. Leash starts. Yeah. Yeah. Those times, yeah. <laughs> times times for 
potential times for off leash in the core. Wait. Uh, no, starting on leash, right? Starting no, because one of the options could be no oh. off leash in the core at all. It's always on leash, which I heard some people say oh. like, nope, we mm -hmm. don't have any times. It's just zones. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, I want this time for off leash. I want that time for off leash. Is that better than first deciding whether we should do times? I think this is just a like, let's find it's out where the this. room is at because people are saying some different things. And you could like, say no times. You can say no times. You can say, my just, dream is like, you know, maybe say, mm, I don't want to make it complicated. There's a difference between what is your dream and what you can live with, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think what we actually want is what we can all live with. And it's not us yeah. personally. It's like, what's best for the community? Mm -hmm. Your totally. point of like, totally. well, this is not what I made. I'm, this is mm -hmm. what seems to make sense for this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe speaking of seniors, is it possible to do a ground and say what you could live with? I don't know, but I don't know where the I don't know where the middle I don't know totally where the middle is. It feels like the middle is somewhere between no times at all and like a bigger chunk. Of, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, this is not very exciting. Go ahead and say yeah. your preferred offish. Yeah, your per, maybe your preferred, and then what you. Including okay. that. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So we do oh. get two minutes, hour second. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's <laughs> two minutes. I just want to see if like Preferred seven people all say way. before 9 a.m. and then we can find out if the rest of the people can live with that. Like right. that's yeah. that's what this is trying to do is like what is actually everybody feeling and are, are we closer than we think? Let's say we heard that and then afterwards yeah. we can right. say, would you live? That, that's great. Let's split it into two. And, and I would Here. just would love to say not what you could do but that's... yeah oh, yeah maybe more like what upholds or... the park's mission <laughs> yeah or, you know yeah. what yes yes you yes know. what is within yeah mm -hmm. let's start with can preferred on that one do if anyone has knows they can start i know I oh start. Start. no times yeah, and then we'll go this way <laughs> sorry stephanie you're in that um, i'm with alan no times um 11. 11. No times. No times. I think 9 a.m. 11. 11. No times. This is preferred, right? Preferred. Yeah. preferred. No times. <laughs> Either nine or no times. So of the commissioners who actually get to vote, we have a no, a no. 11. 11. I, I, I don't get to vote. He doesn't and, vote. No, I know. I was pointing to Stephanie. Oh. No. So no. 11. 11. No. No. Nine. Still, we can live with. Okay, now do yeah, it. Yeah. So having now. heard that, yes. you kind of, we know the parameters. Like Now what we can live with, what would what would best uphold our mission. And <laughs> all the, the, I'll read the mission. Now would be inappropriate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the mission. right hour of 8.46 p.m. The mission of the Parks Commission is that the Parks Commission advances a long-term vision to ensure that parks, gardens, greenways, and natural areas are vital to Montpelier's community identity and forever available for the enjoyment of all. Can I just say, if you have no time, does that imply always on leash? Correct. Yes. That's, okay, I just want to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Always off leash in the okay. there you go. Zones. I can live with mine. Nine. Wait, we're not talking about what we could live with. Yes, yeah, we are. We're not calling it that. We're not using that phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel yeah. like, sorry, yeah. that just seems confusing because you just read the mission and it said, and I think the question is actually like, what what best upholds the mission? Mm, yeah. That's the question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's not like, where could, what could we live with? I think that's right. Two percent. Actually, a different yeah. answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's restart. Right. Let's restart. Okay. What best upholds the mission? No pressure. <laughs> I'm still sticking with nine. Wait, sticking with nine? Yes. Okay. Me too. Ten. <laughs> Eight. No, fine. 
I also think no times. 11. 10. 10. Did you say 10, 10 or you were repeating? Okay. I said 10. No times. And also no times. Hope you were putting that into a really cool table for us. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bulleted list. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> with yeah, commissioner in the fold. Oh, no, I said listening. preferred no because I would love to snap my fingers yeah. and have a trail system in a northern yeah. that was mm -hmm. equal in everybody's perception and mind or whatever. I, yeah, I think this talking about times. There's a lot more to the proposal of yeah. like. And trails are upgraded, and this, and you know, and nobody just committed to any sort of a vote. I think that's important right. to say too. You right, know, we're we're in the conversation right. absolutely phase for up until yeah we vote yeah. So I think that's important, and and I think it's important to note that the meeting on Monday is going to have public comment, and it's part of focus. this long discussion without public comment uh, is that we need we've tried making proposals as a dog committee and we have Alex proposal coming from the staff. We haven't gotten to talk about it. So we really need to narrow it down so that people have something to comment about in the next week by emailing our group um, and by like putting it out there to the town at large too, to talk about it and sit with it for a week. So like, I'm just looking at some of the comments in the, Zoom and it's like there's this is like we need something else to put out there that we've accomplished. Something. Are the Zoom comments going to be the catalog? I've been saving most of them. Yes. Yeah. I wonder if there are actually two proposals for Monday and one is without times and one is at ten a.m. Based on the things I heard of what people so like dotted have. line zone on uh like zone all, only the park is off leash until 10 and after 10 mm -hmm. the core dotted is on leash yeah yeah that, that oh well, do we want to put it at 10 that was, 9 10 whatever it is but i think that what we just heard just like the up what upholds our mission what we heard from commissioners anywhere anyway was 9 9 8 10 and no times. Okay, great. Maybe it's eight. Thank you for elucidating the so. dog commissioners versus so, dog committee. Since this is not a vote, maybe it should just say these are the ranges. This is these are the times. It's basically it's, eight, it's to eight, eight to ten. ten. No times are eight, eight, eight to ten. ten. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, because yeah. otherwise yeah. it feels That's like there's a decision tonight. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And part of the piece we are missing is information from the public Feedback. about when do yeah. they, because we have a lot of anecdotal things about when people go with their dogs and when they don't, and when do we personally, but like, this is the piece that was missing from the we're survey data. A lot more targeted. You think? That would be that. great. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can you please <laughs> just tell us if this would meet your needs at all, what times and like, um, be really also, helpful. I would add to like what's helpful, like I have a little list that and I've tried to highlight things from this conversation that are like, no matter what the outcome is, like we need some better signage in the north part of the park, like feet, people feel lost there. It's not new to this conversation. We heard that when we were doing the management plan that's in the management mm -hmm. plan. Um, you know, people like the more accessible trail, like there are some things that are like surfacing from this conversation but are like no matter the outcome here's what we need and i would say that those types of things are also helpful to share is that like the off yeah. education idea off -leash education, education or bringing a leash into the park yeah you must have a leash you, even it's if good. it's off, off leash time you have to be holding a leash with you like that's you know it's those are existing can i put it on? yeah, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. that yeah. one off <laughs> no, <okay>. yeah <laughs> I think I think that if we're gonna put this out to the public, it would be also very helpful. Um, like it was great to hear Alex say, "This is the plan for the fitness trail." So that's how that's gonna change. And like, what is what else is slated for this summer in the northern end? Yeah, I can talk about that. That's helpful. I mean, a part of it depends on what. You know, you can throw out proposals, but part of it depends on where the line is, mm -hmm. is what, you know, how much effort do we want to go through if people feel like they're satisfied with accessibility before a certain times. So it's a little bit hard to like totally give a it. proposal that's like, this is what we're going to do. But mm -hmm. things we could do, you know, 
or that we could that we well, could we're fast like, track. Yeah. yeah. Would be like fitness trail, we can fix it up. Let's say we're gonna fit fix up the fitness trail from the dog park to seven fireplaces or to the seven fireplaces around right there. Um and it, you know, it's described clearly in the management plan what the desired it, that's already a project that's in the management plan. It's clearly described what it's desired to look like. So it's right there. We can just pull from that. Um, the Hemlock Hill Trail, um, I think, is long overdue for a complete reroute. So I would like mm -hmm. to see that redesigned and redone this summer. And I think we have plenty of help. We can do that um, without without any um, trouble. So um, um, creating that corridor, you know, another um, option. There's a to go into the and northern part of the drive park. To, get to the shorten steam trail, like, you know, I have some ideas for that. I think that needs a little bit more discussion about, you know, how to make that. And and to me, that's a low priority because people can walk on a very wide road, you know, down to the new shelter. You know, they can, if you're trying to get to the park, from, to the off leash area from Hubbard Park Drive, like, the terrain is quite accessible as it, as it is. Um, and then, you know, I think tackling the expansion trails is already on our agenda for this summer. So we're looking at, you know, creating this phase 1A, which goes back to conversations we were having before, but connecting Wyndham Drive to seven fireplaces with two clear trails that are like named and marked and not going through wetlands, um, or if they are like being boardwalked and, and creating well. So it's not just amazing trails in there. So I think those those four trail projects are two of them are already on our list. Two of them could easily be put on the list and then we could take it from there. Would you feel um comfortable just kind of like outlining that on a little one pager to we could post the site sure. and that would yeah. provide some context for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be helpful. If we were considering time, whether it's eight, nine or or 10 in the morning, are we implying that after that morning time, when it's on leash, it's until the park is closed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, just want to be clear about yeah. that. And the second thing is we're also recommending or saying that the northern section will always be off leash? Right. Yeah. Are we mm -hmm. saying that? Yeah. Okay, yes. just want to make Can I make a quick point about that, though? You know, we're, we can't bind the hands of any future Park Commission. Okay. I mean, I assume we're going to assess as years go on, and we're going to maybe make changes. And I, you know, we're going to get I'm I'm going to get accused of slippery slope. <laughs> but you know, I'm just saying there's no way to put in statute. This is it forever. Can't have yeah. a restricted covenant forever. <laughs> and also making clear that like the northern part isn't. It's not just like all of a sudden dog free for all. Like it's been mentioned already, right. but like. Right. In our code of conduct, there's going to be more enforcement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be welcoming for everybody. Yeah. And not just yeah. Can I ask on the northern part, like the deer yard? I will, yeah, we my office is next to Brian Pfeiffer's. And every time I, he says that all the dogs should chase away all the deer because they're total nuisances and they need to be hunted more. <laughs> and that the deer yard should not be, you know, like I'm paraphrasing, but like, you know, that the deer yard is not a precious thing and that these deer have become pests and like, it's not like in the summer in particular, it's not a big deal. But like, I think that the deer yard has come up yeah. as a mm -hmm. point of concern mm -hmm. for people who have takes on it in all directions. Mm -hmm. So I think that if we're looking at the Northern section, you know, I think there has been like Deer Yard, Parks Connector, like that place, that trail that goes way out to the stump dump, you know, are those then definitively off leash because we're doing a simple zone solution and it's either like similar with that vote on the times, it's either all on or all off and is it all on or all off on all those trails in the north? Mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing that up. Clarify about the Deer Yard for the public and everyone else. So the deer yard only applies in deep snow in the winter. And the idea is that in deep snow under hemlocks, there's less snow cover. And so deer can more easily get away from predators. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's why the dog on leash sign is there for the deer yard, but it's not clarified that it's only in deep snow, which is something that we experience now very rarely. Mm -hmm. um, so there's two issues at play. One is like, what is the deer yard? It really only applies in that situation of deep, deep snow. So let's say for 
charitably 90% of the year, it's not a non-issue. Um, Are there a higher number of that, pigs in that yard? The, <laughs> well, well, I think what you're raising is, is just one of a number of issues, which is like, yeah, ticks, public parks, do we need more deer in Montpelier? Are we trying to protect deer in Montpelier? They're already protected because there's no hunting, things that Brian is raising. So that is a little bit stickier, and I think we would have to really consult where the line is on, you know, statute versus opinion, and probably is worth doing down the road. But I think the important nugget is like deer yard only applies in the deep snow. So like how do you like? It, yeah, I mean it's in the it's in the rule somewhere. We could we could find it out. Yeah. Maybe that could be added to yeah. the You have to measure the deer. <laughs> <laughs> so, like right. maybe it should be clarified like okay i feel like we're um friends on a powder it's okay. nine o'clock <laughs> I, I have clarify one more issue that's been raised in a couple of places which is the state house trail okay. which it, it, it's not um it's not city property it's state property and there is a trail on it and we have an mou with the state about what is the mou uh memorandum of understanding mm -hmm. about that we that we maintain it but I think again, like just to, I feel like we should just set that piece aside because it will require collaboration with the state. It was intentionally left out of the zones mm -hmm. because it, there's just, it's too complicated to lump that in. And Becca raised that and other people have too. It's just that side. Would it be useful to determine now when we're already in deep talking about dogs? like what our desired is for that so that if and when it comes up we're prepared to address that because if we don't address that now what's going to happen is we'll make these decisions and then the state is going to say hey should we leash here right and then That's we're going to be like oh yeah let's all talk about the st stone tower path and then make decisions and the public's going to say, but that's a slippery slope. And you like already talked yeah. about, didn't we already figure this out? Why are we talking about the state house trail? Right. So I feel like we point. should have like our, even if we can't implement it, we should say like, here's what our vision is and whether the state wants to do it or not, we're at least. Yeah. And they probably would follow our lead if they yeah. were like, we want to put in the MOU that this is a on leash trail only. It might be in there already. I should look at it. I'm not sure. In which case, it Why looks. Why don't you look at it? Because that could save us a ton of time and discussion. <laughs> like, like, like if we could start from there. But otherwise, maybe get some info on that for next week's meeting. Yeah. Um, and like just the way this is visually right now, my mental assumption is that the state house trail is also on leash because it's leading into the on leash but like that just or seems you, to be or how you have a short window of using it off leash before the mo you get <laughs> <laughs> your last hurrah this summer um okay so um the outcome so oh clarify, clarify the question just as we're talking about trails is there a re and maybe you said this sorry is there a reason the off leash doesn't include the ccv trail and stump dump trail um i in my head i had Thought that that might also be the end, or do we not own? The, so we don't own, own like, that. Well, the stump. So, oh, the just the very northern section there. The section, yeah, right beyond here. the orange the, line. Yeah. yeah. We only own parts of that. So, if we wanted to be definitive, we would have to revisit each landowner agreement on there. I think we could extend it somewhat into the stump dump, but it was more of just like a drawing boundaries around land we actually have control over. So. Um, so, I mean, I assume those, yeah, I don't know. I guess it would probably be safer to assume they would support an on-leash than if they, you know, I feel like if I were a landowner and I had a trail across my property, it's more likely they would be pro on-leash than off-leash, unless they were like a super, unless, like if somebody was like, I'm gonna revoke access to the trail unless this dog's off-leash, that would surprise me, but. <laughs> right, but if yeah. we don't have to, I mean, current status quo, we wouldn't have to revisit it, correct? We, you, I mean, right. they're current. They're current. There is currently off or canine code of conduct on those trails. I assume. Yeah. And that wouldn't be a change yes. in the proposal. <laughs> so yeah. if you just kind of left things as is, right. we can sort of mentally assume that line continues Correct. to the end of those yes. trails. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So, um, what we are proposing to the public is that uh, zones with the dotted line. 
and the possibility of times ranging from no times, which means that dogs would always be leashed in the core, or 8 a.m. Uh, off leash until 8 a.m. and then on leash, off leash until 9, off leash until 10. Um, and Alec is going to share a synopsis of the other planned sign improvements and trail improvements and work plan this summer. Um, when we meet next, it's on Monday, May 13th at 5 p.m. Um, and so that's primarily, this was primarily for us, that's for the public, and then we make a decision. So that will be much more public comment. We have a bigger room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Chamber, okay. Chambers. Perfect. So we all get a microphone. <laughs> Very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> In a big chair. Um, and, um, Anything else we need to refine on that? We'll have to figure out facilitation and whatnot, but anything else? This proposal or proposals will be shared just on the website, on the forum. Somebody, like, how it will be shared to the public. Yeah. yeah, we need to post that. Mm -hmm. I could post anything. Um, Seems useful for the Parks Commission if you draft those. Yeah. Right. And it probably could be what? I think honestly, I think it's going to be the better. Shorter. Shorter. I have links probably to every all the background documents and then say that here's our final proposals that we're considering. And if I know that in previous meetings you said that you're like like we love the documents, proposals, all of them, except we love all your recommendations except for this two to four, and that's not gonna work, but like yes to education, yes to this, yes to that. It might be worth restating that in the proposal. Yeah, like agreed. That, you know, this is gonna be leashes on roads, at shelters, more education, this, yes. that, and this. Like yeah. that should just sure. it's been a dog. But, no, so, but but it's not gonna be relevant for, the, yeah. for this drawing. So like just to that's, restate yeah. the whole like this the package. Is the whole package. Yes. Um and um, Emily, I can do as lead oh, writer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a professional writer. She's a I know. Yeah. writer. That's what she does. Yeah. 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 Yes. So, how about if you work on that and let's aim to get it up maybe tomorrow, but maybe more likely on what's today, Tuesday, Wednesday, like by Thursday, mm -hmm. put it up on the city website. And that would give people Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday to meet Monday. So you post it, maybe stick a thing on front porch form, being like, that's up there. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely and push it Evelyn, out. Evelyn, you can put the... it on the Facebook and all that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Facebook, we'll email all the people Facebook. on the listserv. Um, so There's are we communicating for, yeah, we just have it Instagram. So are we sort of sticking with the messaging that like we're making a decision next week or are we? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So May 13th is public hearing um, and followed by a decision. Great. And then, and then I mean, May there's a lot of first. details to figure out as far as like role, like implementation, enforcement, stuff that has been floating around, but yes. is, has not been talked about at all. <laughs> I think like, we can ignore all of that we until make we make a decision okay. and then yeah, do okay. that because you have all of that kind of drafted in the works, but... I don't think it's going to change. That's not going to change should, the decision. Should yeah. we pre be prepared to talk about it if there is time at the next meeting? I mean, maybe, I mean, if there's probably going to be lots of public comment, but if it's not as <laughs> there's if, nobody wants to say take as much time as like, it possibly yeah. could, should we be prepared to touch on that at least? In my mind, like the implementation does sort of inform the decision because it's like, I want something that's going to be simple to implement in terms of like, the implementation plan, I think that will come after the decision. I don't know if squeezing it into the next week's meeting is going to be doable, but I'm definitely thinking about how, yes. what is this going to yes. look like on the ground. Yeah. You know, when I'm make when I'm going to, when I decide what I'm voting for. But we don't need necessarily need like a document or a presentation I don't think next on week. next week yeah, on we implementation. Decide. We'll decide. Yeah, and yeah. then maybe May 21st, we could say, okay, this is what we decided. Yeah. Here's all the details on how to implement. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think there are some of us on the document who had thoughts about education. And yeah. And we could like these. throw some yeah, of that brainstorm awesome. here. That'd be great. Wonderful. That'd be awesome. So May 20th, I had been potentially imagining that as a different meeting. <laughs> Not about <laughs> but that. But oh, really? <laughs> if we want to stick with this issue, we can just see it through to the end. That's fine. 
you know, there's the option to, we didn't do our walking meeting last month because we didn't have quorum. Um, Are the walking meetings on leash or off leash? Currently, <laughs> by current rule. Off leash, off leash. 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 You send us the implementation plan. We review it ahead of time. We have our. I don't think that would be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think yeah. the implementation. I mean, there's... enforcement is going to be a big conversation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't think there's too much to discuss on implementation. We can basically be like, how about this? And you all can be like, great. Wouldn't it be uh, cute if people just call the police? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, enforcement, <laughs> like, I feel like it merits a further discussion. So we can either do that, right. like, and then. You know, there's, yeah, if, if we if we wanted to walk on the 20th and make progress on that project, that's another Is option. it the 20th or the 21st? I think it's the 20th. 21st is a Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Okay, the 21st, yeah. Okay. okay, and that's a walking meeting? No, that's not, that's what I'm saying is, you know, <laughs> that's I'm saying, do we want to do a dog meeting on the 21st for three dog meetings in a row, or do we want to mm -hmm. go back to the Parks Connector project and walk that? Mm -hmm move that forward, approve the, like it's gonna be flagged by then. So we could look at the, the trail was flagged and then we could look at the proposed walking trails as well, which I guess ties into this issue. I think my question but, Alec, for you, like what I heard, part of what made this process feel so rushed at the beginning of April and March was like, we need to get this decision made for the upcoming so we can implement. Now that yeah. we're, you know, a month and a half out from that, like realistically, is implementation of this gonna happen this summer? Like yeah. that's that to me, if I was making this decision and I'm not, but like if I was about when to have the implementation plan, like is it more important to talk about the Parks Connector Trail like just based on your summer yeah. schedule? Yeah, appreciate you bringing that up um, and for saying it better than my tired brain is. I think, you know, I just wanna be like transparent. Like I definitely wanted to see an advanced timeline for implementation. And I think it's spurred on a lot of this good conversation that has like pushed us past the point that it's really realistic to like fully implement us this summer. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I feel like we can do our best, but just looking, you know, it's kind of also one of those things. And, and my disposition is always to think things are easier than they're actually, than they actually end up being. <laughs> but we're, we're just, I mean, carry. Yeah. No, I just said it's a park motto. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One um, of them. We're just we're just buried and adding. You know, I want to do this right. I want to do it thoroughly. And um, well, is there some it's advantage it's where um, we can? You could. You said you could actually do some of these trail improvements oh, over the course yeah. of the summer, which right. may actually make it easier mm -hmm. to like swallow and absorb on the impact. Yeah, and so yeah, that could be part of the discussion next week. Um, in terms of like something, you know, creating signs and, you know, just um, rolling out communications, like that stuff, it just takes time. Like it seems easy, but it, it takes a lot of time. And then the, um, just to have it like, and part, part of it is a little hard for me to wrap my brain around, like what what is the what until there's like a vote and we're like, this is what we're doing. And then we can be like, this is what we can do. And this is when we can do it. Um, and I don't know. Uh, yeah. So based on that, I think because the question was on May 21st, do we talk about implementation or do a walk and talk about the uh, new trails? I think we give you more time to think through like how this happens on the ground and mm -hmm. how do we do it right. Yeah. And um, maybe, um, Dan, I'm looking at you because you do graphic design, <laughs> but maybe there's some kind of way to like do some of that work and and focus on the new trails do the all the other good work that we do as park commissioners and as park staff and like ha actually have a regular meeting on the 21st but a walking yeah. meeting and then maybe in june say okay we've marinated for here's the plan here what some visuals could look like yeah how does that sound yeah give everybody a break from this for a meeting yeah i mean from the i feel like i initially communicated like once june hits like we're not adding anything at all we can't do anything and and that's june is close <laughs> so um we're we're getting pretty much out of time so i i, I still want to commit to like doing our best I, I i wish i could say we could do it but i i don't think i don't think i could responsibly say that we can take this on this whole implementation on before the field season uh, 
other elements of it. That and yeah, I think that's the part we have yeah. to think through. Sorry, yeah, yeah. What you, I, I was just thinking there there are parts, especially things that were already in the parks management plan that we were planning to do, like you know certain signage that is like around the parking areas, for instance. That's mm -hmm. going to happen. I don't know if that can happen. I'm just saying, like that an example of something that is going to happen regardless. That maybe there are some items from that list that we could pick and get done. Mm -hmm. I certainly think the public would benefit from having, having like, there will be a policy. It yes. will go into effect, not tomorrow, exactly. but at this yeah. date. <laughs> you can think about it. You can start walking some different trails. You can right. see how they are. You can give feedback to the park staff about what you want, you know, mm -hmm. like just the, the that process of change is really hard. Yeah. And like mm -hmm. giving people, like right now, there's just going to be more freaking out about it because it's still ambiguous sure. yeah and i think what i'm what i'm where i'm going is kind of what you're saying is like instead of we were initially talking about like posting on may 1st like this is the these are the new rules changes are coming on june 1st and give us all of may to do it um but like we might have to more be more like these are the new rules that were voted like they're going to be implemented in the fall or something give people three or four yeah and i recognize that's not what the commission wanted or you know what i certainly communicated uh, we would do, but I think that's kind of where we're at at this point. And in the meantime, I wouldn't doubt that every dog in town will be on their very best behavior between now and then. I feel like this has just surfaced a lot of good dog behavior. Yeah, no, I think uh -huh. the advanced timeline really helps. Yeah. The conversation along, so yeah. I don't regret that. Okay, so um, we meet next week. So Emily? I really, really don't want to say this, but I feel like it needs to at least be aired if we're delaying Implementing should we delay them? No, we know. We're going to do it this year. Yeah, it's for the fall, not right now. Okay. I still think but we need a vote. Be delayed though, but we need to come up with the best implementation. I, implementation I, plan. Yeah, we need to work on the plan and, and everything select. else. I think yeah. it still makes sense to vote and then no. craft the implementation yeah. plan and talk Agreed. about enforcement yeah. and then we'll be ready for prime time come the very very busy fall season yeah just not the very very busy summer season yeah all right there's been a ton of good work done in the last two months and i think voting now builds on that mm -hmm. we don't want to like lose momentum popping that ball of energy and picking right. it back up later like we're just yeah yeah, yeah it's fun work i and i I think given the history of this issue in this town that it's commit, it's time to just commit. Mm -hmm. Like you keep talking about it forever. Cause like the thing is that I don't like our, our surveys are 50, 50, our votes are 50, 50, like everything is so close. And I guess, yeah it's time. it's time to call it yeah. and then it lets someone bring a lawsuit or something you know but like it's time to call it time to call it all right um on that it's nine seventeen, and we are adjourned by unanimous consent